Starting off at number 10, we have the model and actress Cara Delevingne. The young celebrity took to social media to confess that the modeling industry has left her feeling hollow. Even though the well known star has been making millions for walking down a runway, she still is not satisfied with who she is as a person or who she was because she quit modeling and I'll get to it. She has stated that having a career in modeling makes someone feel so superficial that you actually forget who you are. The detrimental affairs that come with working in modeling caused for her to struggle with mental health and depression. She also noticed that when she wasn't spending her money on others, they were conveniently not around her. She admitted that she feels old and run down due to her career path, even though at her age, she's young, she should be enjoying herself and all the money that came with her fame. Good news is, like I mentioned, she has now retired from the modeling industry and is spending time living life for herself. Following along to our next spot at number nine is Keanu Reeves. The actor is a household name that starred in some of the most popular films in history, which sounds like a dream. During his early days in Hollywood, he was met with partying, fame, and fortune, but it wasn't long for him to realize that this lifestyle was not fulfilling to him. Being as famous as he is, you would expect the actor to enjoy the finer things and like enjoy his financial success. But on the flip side, he has been very vocal about how little he cares about the money that he makes. Throughout his life, he has been met with great tragedy with the loss of his best friend and fiance. It made him realize that he does not need the great amount of money that he has to live a real and happy life. Therefore, the star reportedly gave his entire salary from the Matrix away and is known for donating millions to charity. Additionally, he acknowledges that money is the last thing he thinks about. As the actor doesn't dictate success with money and holds no emotional value in fortune, this mentality has led him to live a happier and more interpersonal successful life. Good on him. That's all I got to say. He does do a lot of charity work. Moving on to number eight, we have Kristen Stewart. Kristen found her big break and made a fortune being the leading lady in the Twilight franchise. Though this was not met with a lavish lifestyle filled with happiness, believe it or not. Her Twilight era saw major criticism of all kinds towards the actress, and even though it was a career defining moment for her, she has tried her hardest to move past her role as Bella Swan. The actress has since taken many roles, but has fallen under the radar, some would say, compared to Twilight, we should say. Though this comes with satisfaction as Kristen has tried her hardest to remain antisocial from the media because she could actually care less about fame and money. The star has stated that her intention was never to become famous and that she finds the most joy when she is enjoying her craft of simply acting. Many are quick to assume fame and money is just met with happiness, but she could not disagree more. And spot number seven is Lindsay Lohan. The actress is not new to the fame and headlines as she has been in the spot spotlight her basically her entire life. Though during her teen years she was rich and a mess according to the media. The fame and fortune left the celebrity with numerous times in rehab and a lot of bad press. Though her troubles cannot be mentioned without acknowledging the influence that fame and money had in navigating her towards this behavior. I can only imagine how hard that would be. With an entire life lived in the eye of the public, with constant criticism towards her appearance, choices in romantic relations, her her behavior was a reaction to this very unhealthy relationship that she had with her amount of fame. As Lindsay has aged, ironically, she's lost a lot of her fortune, though she is seemingly living a happier and quieter life. She's coming back, she has a podcast coming out, y'all. Moving on to the number six spot, we have the infamous Justin Bieber. The celebrity started his career very young and has been in the spotlight ever since he was 13 years old. Being in the spotlight at such a young age definitely comes with its downfalls and it's known that he has had a very hard time in Hollywood. He's very open about it. With his mix up with the law and disrespecting his fans, it seems like it's just bad behavior, but this all comes from a darker place. Bieber has confessed that he often struggles to get through the day for how lonely he feels when he's touring. He continued and also said that the fame and celebrity lifestyle rips you apart when you can't just do anything alone. You get depressed, which doesn't seem like it should happen, but Apparently it does. Justin said he would not wish this lifestyle upon anyone. Also, his song Lonely is basically to sum up this entire paragraph that I just said. He talks about how he can have everything in the world and still feel lonely. I was gonna sing some, but I won't. Halfway through our list, at number five is Lady Gaga. 
The singer is one of the most well known celebrities, let's be honest. In a revealing interview, the singer confessed her personal struggles with fame. She acknowledged that when she goes out in the world, she belongs to everyone else but herself. The singer also stated that she is upset about the fact that it is legal for people to follow her, to stalk her, and that she can't do anything about it besides simply accept it because of who she is. During the interview, the singer began tearing up talking about her helplessness when it comes to privacy and her personal well being. She also stated that she has transformed into a different person since she has become a celebrity, and once she began getting recognized in public, it changed every interaction that she ever has with people. The singer confessed that she wishes she could go anywhere and just meet strangers without the factor of like being recognized. Next in line on the countdown, taking the number four spot is Selena Gomez. The young star's struggle with an illness always set her back, especially when she was originally trying to hide her lupus diagnosis from the public. Starting her career as a Disney child star, she has adapted her career to be the strong woman and talented singer that she's known to be now. But this wasn't done as swiftly as it sounds. Selena has admitted that during her Disney phase, she felt very violated because she didn't have any control over this because she didn't quite understand fame during that time. And while now she's more control over this as she has aged, she still isn't over her struggles of being in the spotlight. Being a young woman in the media, she is met with constant criticism, a little to no privacy, and all her relationships on display for everyone to comment on. Justin Bieber, but we won't get into that. This has led the star to struggle with life in the spotlight and its effect on her mental and physical health. Therefore, no matter how many followers you have or how rich you are, the personal struggle and criticism is always going to be there. I think she is the most followed person on Instagram still. Fact check me, but I think she is. Or she's close. Taking one of the top spots at number three is Billie Eilish. The pop star sensation took Hollywood by storm at the age of 17, and she is one of the most famous celebrities in the entire world. Though being in the spotlight did not help solve her struggle with mental illness. Billie has constantly struggled with anxiety before and after stardom. The singer has even admitted that when touring, her anxiety is even worse, and there was actually a week on tour where she had panic attacks every night for a week straight. And only recently has a singer come out to reveal the struggle to live with Tourette syndrome, especially when she was trying to hide it in the spotlight. Obviously that made things much harder. There have been many ways for which she tries to regain her personal self and hold on her privacy, and one of those ways is through her fashion. We all know that Billie is known for wearing extremely baggy clothes, but this choice was not because of preference. Well it was because of preference, but there was a reason behind it. The singer has revealed multiple times that her choice to wear these baggy clothes is because she didn't want the world to just know everything about her, so it's kind of a way to like protect herself. Continuing down the list, number two, we have Demi Lovato. The talented actor and singer was once known for their time on Disney, starring in multiple shows while simultaneously touring the world for their music. But with all the money that came with this very busy lifestyle, it didn't compare to the constant personal struggle and exhaustion that the celebrity faced. And there became a point where Demi had to step back and take a break from the spotlight to choose to work on themselves instead of continuing their current mentally unsustainable lifestyle. After spending time in rehab and therapy to deal with their mental illnesses, Demi decided it was the right time to come back into the spotlight. This new Demi was a healthy minded, body positive person who wasn't worried about the money they make, but was more concerned on who they allowed into their life. Ironically, when Demi came back into the spotlight, and was transparent about their mental health issues, they became more famous for being so true to themselves. Finally, we've made it to number one, and we have Amy Winehouse. This is one of the more devastating cases on this list because Amy had such a successful career in the industry, but was very abused in the media. You can actually check out her documentary, you guys. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, it was so good. Anyways, check it out. Though no one can argue that her fame and fortune was very well deserved for her amount of talent. But even though Amy made millions during her short career in music, she had a lot of troubles. Her struggles were partially due to her substance addiction, but mostly due to her sudden rise to fame and how that put a great amount of stress and shock on her. With no idea of how famous she would become, 
but she was unprepared for the fame that she received. Because of this great amount of fame, the media began exploiting her for her addiction. Throughout this, she often got lost and felt depressed, which spiraled into getting involved with the wrong crowd and the wrong things. A number of people close to the singer shared that she had little to no interest in being a celebrity. The money meant nothing to Amy, she truly only wanted to be a singer. The singer did not have a big fancy house or any materialistic things that didn't really matter to her. Sadly, with the unknowingly amount of fame and fortune that she would receive, also just came a lot of depression and stress. In the documentary, y'all, it's really crazy to see what she went through. These two met in 2016 on the set of Spider-Man Homecoming. Tom said in an interview that he and Zendaya were the best of friends and he was taking her advice on how to deal with his newfound fame. Then in 2017, it was first rumored that the two were dating, but the pair denied it. Dating rumors were never confirmed until 2021 when paparazzi snapped photos of Tom and Zendaya making out in a car. And since they have been very open on social media about their relationship, there is no doubt they are a serious item. So serious they're actually moving in together. It's been reported that their home will be in London. It's a six bedroom mansion in Richmond, which Tom bought for three million pounds last month. Tom already owns a flat in London, while Zendaya owns a home in Los Angeles. They're also planning to renovate their new home, having a current rental budget of 250,000 pounds. They'll be adding a gym, cinema, and a man cave, among other things. The Richmond property Tom bought for himself and his girlfriend is four miles away from Kingston upon Thames, where Tom's childhood home is. A source said about their move, quote, Tom has spent quite some time making this house into his perfect home, and Zendaya has been visiting him in London, so let's see. They're Hollywood's hot young couple and don't want to be apart. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Tom Holland and Zendaya have net worths of 18 million and 15 million respectively. Let's break down how they make their money. Let's start with Zendaya. Zendaya has multiple properties that she's purchased with her fortune. Zendaya paid $1.4 million for a home in Northridge, California, and $4 million for a 5,000 square foot home in Encino, California. Zendaya first started acting on the Disney Channel when she was 14, getting a co-starring role on Shake It Up alongside Bella Thorne. She's also modeled since she was just a child. We have no way to estimate what she made from these roles, but former Disney stars have admitted that they didn't make much from the Disney Channel. Her main fortune came from the MCU. At 21, she landed the role of MJ in Spider-Man. According to Stylecaster, she made $2 million for Spider-Man No Way Home. She had a small role in the movie Dune, but still made a pretty $300,000 payout from the role. She acted alongside Timothy Chalamet. Another one of her biggest projects has been acting as Rue in the hit HBO series Euphoria. Not only has it brought her tons of recognition and accolades, like winning her an Emmy, but she's reportedly earned a huge chunk of change from the movie. It was estimated that her net worth was only $5 million before joining the show. On top of acting, she's also produced movie Malcolm and Marie, in which she also starred, again earning her a handsome amount. Since we know Zendaya truly does it all, she's also released a book about style, something she does very well. The 2013 book is called Between You and Me, How to Rock Your Tween Years with Style and Confidence. She's also been the face of huge brands like Madonna's Material Girl clothing line, CoverGirl, Lancome, Valentino, Bulgari, and more. Zendaya also created her Dea shoe collection in 2015 and the Dea by Zendaya clothing line the following year. We don't have exact figures for all of these ventures, but it can be assumed that she's made well over a couple million for all of these combined. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Zendaya's net worth is an estimated $15 million as of 2022. This is thanks to over a decade of television and film appearances, along with multiple brand partnerships and sponsorship deals under her belt. Her net worth is $3 million less than Holland's, who is $18 million. Zendaya has opened up about money in the past and it's a subject that she's a little uncomfortable with. In 2021, she spoke about the topic with British Vogue, admitting she talks about money in therapy. Adding quote, the hope is to have a career where you can be in a position financially to just do things you want because you enjoy the work and not have to worry about the other things. But I'm always like, I will always need to work because if I, because if I don't work, everything can be gone tomorrow. She also admitted that even though she has enough money to buy whatever she wants, Zendaya struggles to spend money on herself. Adding quote, my mother's a saver, so I try and keep that in mind. Then my dad's like, you know, you can't spend it when you're dead, kind of thing. So I'm somewhere in between. She even has so much anxiety around not making money that she waited until she was 23 years old to take her first vacation. 
Now moving on to Tom Holland, who's had a very successful career and has made a ton of money from it. Tom was discovered while in school. He was cast in Billie Eilish the musical after choreographer for the musical thought he would be a great fit. He acted in a few more plays until 2012 when he made his on-screen debut in the movie The Impossible, co-starring Naomi Watts and Alan McGregor. Three years later, he would get the role of a lifetime, getting cast as Peter Parker aka Spider-Man in 2015. He signed a six movie deal with Marvel. The first Marvel movie he appeared in was 2016's Captain America Civil War before his first solo film as Spider-Man in 2017's Spider-Man Homecoming. In a GQ interview, the directors of the movie spoke about how they were blown away when they first saw Tom audition, telling the magazine quote, So Holland came in, he did his test. We called Sarah straight after and said, oh my god, he's incredible. He's a movie star. He's got the charisma, he's got the range. It's very rare someone walks into a room who has all the elements that make up a bona fide star. Now you're probably wondering how much he makes from helming a massive franchise like Spider-Man. And obviously, it's a lot of money. So far, he starred in three Marvel movies, 2017 Spider-Man Homecoming, 2019 Spider-Man Far From Home, and 2021's Spider-Man No Way Home. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Holland made $500,000 for Spider-Man Homecoming, the MCU's first Spider-Man movie, but he got a massive raise for his next movie, Spider-Man Far From Home, which made him four to five million dollars with at least 1.5 million in bonuses based on the movie's performance, according to Celebrity Net Worth. The site also estimated that he made the same amount for his next movie, Spider-Man No Way Home, and is set to have the same salary for future Spider-Man movies. Although we would assume he made much more in bonuses from No Way Home, as that movie was one of the most successful films of the entire year. Since Holland is a part of the MCU now, he also stars in other Marvel-related projects. But since he's not the star, he made significantly less in these movies. He's been featured in 2016's Captain America Civil War, 2018's Avengers Infinity War, and 2019's Avengers Endgame. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Holland made $250,000 from Captain America Civil War, which was his first MCU as Spider-Man. The site also reported that Holland made $3 million each for Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, making $6 million in total for both movies, a huge jump from what he started with. Along with starring in MCU films, Holland also played the lead role in 2022 movie Uncharted. It's hard to know the exact figure that he made, but it's speculated that he makes between five to $10 million when he stars the lead in commercial studio movies like this one. It's also been reported that he makes between two to $5 million for independent movies and around $20 million for a streaming movie. These numbers got a significant bump from his debut as Spider-Man in 2017. Now these two are taking their combined net worth of 33 million and putting it towards their new home together. The home in Southwest London is only four miles away from Holland's hometown and is situated near other massive stars like Angelina Jolie, Sir Mick Jagger, and Venom star Tom Hardy. Security is apparently the couple's main concern and they don't want intruders or paparazzi to be able to invade their privacy. Holland has been eyeing a high-tech security and an eight-foot steel security gate on the drive to protect himself and Zendaya. A source close to the couple said, quote, they are over the moon about the property and getting their first home together. They are very much in love and wanted their first home to be in London where Tom grew up. Everyone is thrilled for them. Good luck to the happy couple and hopefully if all goes well in living together, there may be an engagement in the future. Taking the very first spot on this list, number 10, is the famous supermodel Kendall Jenner. With her whole life being in the spotlight and her family having their own reality TV show called Keeping Up With The Kardashians, when she was growing up, there was a constant pressure on her, she said. A few years ago, the model shared her experience with anxiety and how she has experienced it since she was a very young girl. In an interview with Vogue, Kendall confessed that work culture and the consistent presence of paparazzi has set her anxiety out of control in recent years. Additionally, she acknowledges the privilege that she holds for the lifestyle she has and the fortune that she was born into. Though despite her privileges, she still has everyday and real life struggles that all humans do. Kendall Kendall ended one interview by saying, I quote, no matter what someone has or doesn't have, it doesn't mean they don't have real life feelings. She was trying to make it clear right off the bat that no matter how much money you have, you still cannot buy happiness. Swiftly moving forward to the next spot at number nine is Katy Perry. The musician has had many hits throughout her career and topped Billboard 100 in the US. With all the success and money that comes with doing what you love, how could this make Katy so unhappy? We might wonder. Well, the artist felt the constant pressure to always be number one all the time and to constantly have her name in the media. But with a couple song releases that weren't as successful as her past hits, Katy fell into a serious depression, leaving her to struggle even more 
internally. The pressure that came with being a celebrity in Hollywood tore Katie apart and her mental health suffered greatly, she said. Good news is, after acknowledging her mental health struggles, she has been focusing more on herself, her husband, Orlando Bloom, and their baby, which has led her now to consistent happiness and she's now making more music. So, it's just wins all around. Moving up the rankings, taking the eighth spot is the Australian singer and actress Natalie Imbruglia. I hope that's right. With her life in the spotlight, Natalie has always been known to find great success in the industry, be extremely wealthy, but also very unhappy. This is because after Natalie's hit song Torn was released and well received, the celebrity fell off the face of the earth and wasn't seen for a while. The singer sold 7 million copies and is one of the highest selling debut albums by a pop and alternative female artist, so why did Natalie run from this newfound fame? Well, Natalie would later confess that it was due to the fact that making a great amount of money and this newfound fame made her feel extremely isolated. She also made it known that the money she gained from the stardom gave her no real comfort because it led unwanted people into her life. I can only imagine how many people start crawling at you when you start getting fame and money. Moving up the charts, taking the number 7 spot is Robert Pattinson. Most actors try and cover up the roles they don't particularly like, but not him. The actor who starred in the very well known Twilight franchise made it apparent how much he hated starring in that role. While filming, Pattinson's agents were so deeply concerned that he was going to get himself fired for his blatant honesty and careless antics on the film series. They were so worried that they tried their hardest to kind of like sort him out so that he could remain in the series. It had gotten to a point that Robert was so miserable for taking on the prominent role in the Twilight franchise that he had to stop just mentally processing that film and talking about it in interviews. Therefore, even though the Twilight movie series paved the way for his entire acting career, he was the most unhappy he could be during a time where his career was at the highest it has ever been and he was making a fortune for himself. He has since found other opportunities, starring in a range of films, especially focusing on indie films, while also becoming the new Batman. That being said, his unhappy past while starring in the Twilight films will probably always haunt him, because obviously everyone just loves him from that movie. Taking the number 6 spot is the American actor and musician Corey Feldman. In his prime in the 80s, Corey was one of the top actors of all time. This was met with him making a great amount of money and partying with some of the biggest celebrities. But behind all of that, the actor described having a great amount of money to bring a lot of evil in his life. Corey would confess that when he was a young actor, he saw a great amount of wrong things happen behind the spotlight, and he personally was also taken advantage of. The fame and fortune he received by being one of the greatest actors of his time was met with the shocking and disturbing things that happened off camera in Hollywood in the 80s. Which is why as he got older and left the spotlight, Feldman confessed that he was living a more humble lifestyle and wasn't as well off as he used to be, though actually enjoys living this happier and more simple lifestyle. We've made it to the halfway point at number 5, we have Dave Chappelle. The comedian had a very well received comedy sketch show, his show tackled heavy topics but in the classic Chappelle signature, comedic style. One would think a comedian that would make it in the industry would be ecstatic, especially since his comedy show was a hit with audiences. Everyone loved the show to a point where the network actually offered Dave $50 million to continue the show, however he declined the offer. Despite the success of the show, Dave was struggling internally with the concept of his show and the message that it led across. He inevitably didn't want his message to be skewed and taken the wrong way. Therefore, he walked away from the show and the spotlight altogether. He also confessed that the fame was not the scary part that led him to leave the spotlight, but his lack of control over his fame scared him. And when it came down to it, even with a $50 million offer on the table, Chappelle chose himself and his own well being over fame and a great amount of money. However, this decision has led to an even bigger controversy growing on right now between him and Netflix. You'll probably see it online right now. Articles are everywhere. He's boycotting them. Moving up the charts at number four is Chris. Kristen Bell. The American actress has been in a wide range of well known films and TV shows such as Frozen, Gossip Girl, and Bad Moms. The A list celebrity has made a name for herself in Hollywood, though her fame and fortune isn't all that it seems. 
In an interview with YouTube, the celebrity confessed her long and serious battle with depression and anxiety. She comes from a family with a history of serotonin imbalance, so it wasn't anything new for the star to grow up with. Even with the stigma against mental health, Kristen has no remorse speaking up about her battle with her own mental health, and even admitted to taking medication for her issues. Even with her being an A-list celebrity and having a great amount of wealth, Kristen continues to struggle with her mental health to this day. She has since become an activist on the matter and an advocate for mental health transparency. Taking one of the top spots on the countdown at number three is Ashley Judd. The well-known actress has appeared in People's Magazine's list of the top 50 most beautiful people in the world, but she still struggles with her own mental health and self-doubt. Ashley has had a great and successful career, but quickly learned that all the fame and money that came with her celebrity status just meant nothing for her happiness. Ashley's life behind the screen was met with great conflict and struggle, with having to endure abuse from her family, assault, and just being mistreated in Hollywood, and of course, a highly documented, terrible divorce. The actress knew if she could not control her mental stability and the issues going on in her life, the career she built for herself and the fortune that she gained was not worth her inner struggle. After being treated in rehab for emotional difficulties and mental health, Ashley emerged as a different person. Now she knows that she doesn't find happiness in the spotlight and making a great amount of money, so she focuses on her charity work and activism for mental health. Taking the second spot on this list is Harrison Ford. You probably know him as his iconic character in the Star Wars films, but he has been in a great number of hit movies and of course is one of the highest and most paid actors in Hollywood. But all this stardom and money is not the life that Harrison wants to live. In a 2010 interview, Harrison stated that the cost of fame well overtook the positives and fortune from it. He admitted that the negatives that came with fame was unanticipated for him and that he never enjoyed it. From the lack of privacy to not being able to go out in public in peace and the money was just not worth having because he struggled to live a normal life every day that he very much desired. He knows how fortunate he is to have had the opportunities in the industry that he has had, but he didn't become an actor to become rich and famous he says. He became an actor because he simply enjoyed acting. Because of his hatred for fame, the person who once loved acting and being in films is left with a grumpy man who just wants to live a normal life. Topping the chart by taking the number one spot is Evan Peters. He is wildly praised for his acting ability, especially his disturbing and frightening performance in each of his roles in American Horror Story. But after starring in many seasons, he knew he needed a break from the disturbing show as he said it was taking a toll on his mental health. As Evan explained it, he doesn't like having to tap into his darker side to perform disturbing scenes because that's just not the type of person he is. The actor has also mentioned that having to act as angry and dark as he needs to for the demanding show has really hurt him as a person and is changing him for the worse. For those reasons, Evan knew he needed to take a step back from his sought out role in the series and stayed away from the horror genre of acting for two years after his final performance in the eighth season of the TV show. Fans hoped that this time spent away from the show would let him recover and heal from the trauma that it brought him. Celebrity Net Worth reports that Pete's net worth is $8 million. Back in 2018, it was only $2 million, so there's been a massive spike in recent years. It's safe to say his fame after his Ariana Grande relationship made a huge difference. If he keeps going at this rate, he could be worth $32 million by 2025. Davidson is best known for his role in Saturday Night Live, but he's been doing stand-up since he was 16 years old. His earliest on-screen appearance was in Philosophy, an MTV comedy series. Then he was featured on some comedy TV reality shows, including a show called Gotham Comedy Live that showcased up and coming comedy talent in the area. Then he moved on to get a reoccurring role on TV show Brooklyn Nine Nine before earning a coveted spot on the SNL cast in 2014. Pete got the audition through comedian Bill Hader, who he met when Pete filmed a small role in the 2015 movie Trainwreck. Pete first appeared on SNL during the 40th season at the age of 20 making him the youngest cast member of all time, as well as the first cast member to be born in the 90s. It seems that from the beginning, he was a huge hit with fans. He was getting tons of praise in the media for being relatable and tackling serious subjects with his comedy. When the 44th season of Saturday Night Live ended, the Washington Post called Davidson SNL's breakout star and the most memorable performer that season, a huge accomplishment that I'm sure got him a sizable bonus. By now, you're probably wondering how much he makes from being on SNL. 
He's been on the show since 2014, and Celebrity Net Worth reported that back in 2018, his salary was a generous $15,000 per episode. Each season has 21 episodes, making his salary for the entire year roughly $313,000. A nice chunk of change. But since starting that show, he has not only turned into an A-list star, he's become one of the most well-loved members of the cast. So it's not hard to think that he got a raise during this time. It's been reported that top stars at SNL can make up to $25,000 per episode, which would be $500,000 a year. So it's not hard to believe that he might have gotten a raise at one point. And of course, since he's now on SNL, other doors have opened for him in traditional media, including a few movie roles. We know he had small parts in Trainwreck, Brooklyn Nine Nine, and Netflix has set it up before making it big on SNL. He probably didn't make a ton from this, but I'm sure it was a decent amount. Since those small parts he's gotten much bigger roles in movies like The Squad and King of Staten Island, which he was not only the main star of, the movie was also based on his life and upbringing in Staten Island. Because the movie was somewhat biographical, Pete wrote the script for the movie and collaborated a lot with Apatow to make the final product. Pete created the movie, which was about a 24-year-old high school dropout and an aspiring tattoo artist who tries to get his life together. Since the movie was based on his life and he had a huge part not only in creating it, but starring in it, we can assume he made a lot of money from the project. Although that was sadly not the case and the movie bombed at the box office, only making $2.2 million out of its $35 million budget, despite its positive reviews from the critics. Pete also has a comedy stand-up special on Netflix called Pete Davidson Alive from New York. On top of that, he's had a bunch of big projects coming up including Meet Cute and The Things They Carried. It's impossible to know what exactly he got paid for these roles, but we can assume it's in the millions. Since Pete joined megastars like Margot Robbie, Idris Elba and John Cena in DC's Squad, we can assume he made a lot of money, even for his small role. When asked about the role on Jimmy Fallon, Davidson said, quote, I love superhero movies and I'm a huge James Gunn fan. Then I got a call from James Gunn, he was like, there's this role for you in the movie and you play a guy named Richard Hertz. I was like, dude, that's the greatest, that's so awesome. And yeah, he was nice enough to let me be in it, and it's a thing I still can't believe. Now that Pete is a household name, he's also getting brand deals and sponsorship deals with large companies. Most notably, he was in a commercial for Smartwater. The commercial featured Pete at a tattoo removal clinic. When a technician starts working on his arm, we see the bottle of smart water, and Pete says, quote, I've made a lot of questionable choices, and a couple of them need removing. He says that being dehydrated was most likely not the reason he made these questionable choices, but he said he is now trying to make smarter choices by hydrating with smart water. During the commercial, he reflects on other questionable moments from his past, including living in his mom's basement until his late 20s, to hoverboarding rather than walking through a fine dining restaurant. This commercial took inspiration from his real life, as he said during an interview with Seth Meyers that he had to get many of his over 40 tattoos removed. Again, we don't know exactly how much money he made from this, but I would assume it's over a million dollars. Pete also did a sponsorship deal with Calvin Klein, adding to his fortune. Pete and the brand agreed for Davidson to take over Calvin Klein's Instagram account and do whatever that he wanted with it. Davidson first changed the brand's profile picture to feature a photo of him, of course. Then Pete's best friend, MGK, joined Pete for a live stream on the brand's account. Both men were wearing Calvin Klein clothing as well as undergarments, which the men showed as they stripped down for one portion of the live. The pair put on a mock photo shoot where they were showing off the brand's loungewear and undergarments. In one part of this photo shoot, Davidson knelt on the couch with his mouth open as MGK rained popcorn down on him from above. Because of how embarrassing and meme-worthy that live was, I hope he got paid a lot for it. Another part of Davidson's wealth is the money he makes from putting on traditional stand-up shows. He even did a full tour in 2016 called Pete Davidson SMD. And I'm sure that he will be embarking on some other tours once the SNL season is done and he's able to freely travel. I assume he only made a small amount back in the day, but at this point, he could probably sell out a huge stadium if he tried. The last piece of his net worth are the homes and investment properties that Pete has gained over the years. He currently has two homes in his native Staten Island, New York. Back in 2016, Pete reportedly bought his mom a $1.3 million house in his home borough, and in December of 2020, he bought himself a $1.2 million condo a few blocks from his mom's place. The fact that he is still set on living near his mother and taking care of her is just the cutest thing I have ever heard. So what's next for Pete Davidson? We know that he has a ton of projects in the works, and we can assume his affiliation with Kim Kardashian is only going to make him more sought after, 
for money making opportunities. He might even be featured in the Kardashians new Hulu show simply called The Kardashians. Not sure if he would make any money from that, but either way it would bolster his celebrity status even more. Another interesting adventure on his horizon is taking off on Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin ship. On Monday, March 14th, 2022, it was announced that the comedian will be one of the six member crew for the 20th launch of the rocket on March 23rd of 2022. I'm not sure if he had to pay for that honor, but if he did, I'm sure it was a lot of money. At number 10, Marilyn Monroe. Actress Marilyn Monroe was one of the biggest celebrities of the 20th century. She was an icon beloved by so many and she was super successful in Hollywood. However, behind all of that success was a lot of sadness and no matter how much money she had, it still didn't make her life much better. Though she had an estimated net worth of about $27 million at the time, a lot of that money couldn't make up for the hardships she faced behind the scenes. She already carried the trauma of her childhood and according to biographers, Marilyn also struggled with her mental health and found it difficult to cope with her fame. On top of that, each of her three marriages ended in divorce, she endured miscarriages and faced illnesses as well. She could buy whatever she wanted for herself and lived a pretty luxurious life, but she still had her demons that money couldn't fix. At number 9, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra is considered by many to be one of the greatest singers of all time. I mean, he was one of my dad's favorite singers, so he certainly holds a special place in my heart. He was incredibly successful through his entire career and is estimated to have a net worth of about $200 million today. But as great as you would imagine the life of a famous singer to be, turns out that Frank was plagued with unhappiness, according to his son Frank Jr. Frank Jr. has told sources about what his dad was like away from the public eye, saying that his father was often withdrawn and seemed really sad. Frank Sinatra's daughter Tina has also commented on her late father's life, saying that she feels as though her father could have benefited from antidepressants since he was known to experience depression and mood swings throughout his life. The singer reportedly even tried taking his own life on a couple of occasions, so that really just shows you that you never know what someone is going through and that even the rich and famous have their struggles. Before we continue talking about celebrities and their struggles with money and happiness, I would first like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Princess Diana. Diana was the people's princess. She was loved by so many, made such an impact in a lot of people's lives, and gave back to those in need. She got to live a lavish life as well as she was part of the royal family, but even with the fame and riches, Diana was terribly unhappy. She faced a number of hardships both in and out of the public eye and a lot of the pain she experienced stemmed from her marriage to Prince Charles. Though the people loved them, they were not as close and in love as they should have been, and Diana felt trapped. It wasn't until her divorce that she was able to finally find freedom and start her life over again, but for the years leading up to that, the royal riches just couldn't buy her happiness. At number 7, Macaulay Culkin. Former child star Macaulay Culkin was brought into the spotlight very early on in his career. Upon reaching his peak in the 90s after the release of Home Alone, Culkin continued to have a pretty steady career and he made a lot of money, but this money ended up causing a lot of problems for him. He struggled with his own fame and by the age of 16 decided to take a step back from the fame. The actor also got emancipated from his family after his fame and riches caused a rift in their relationship. After getting emancipated from his family, Macaulay went down a dark path and started getting himself in trouble. After getting into trouble with the law and abusing illegal substances, the actor found himself back in the spotlight again, but this time for his fall from grace. Everyone knew him as the adorable child star from the 90s and soon his image became tarnished. He was on cloud 9 when he was younger, but soon when money started to become a big part of his life, it slowly started falling apart, which as you could imagine, would make anyone unhappy. At number 6, Daniel Radcliffe. We all know Daniel Radcliffe for his iconic role as Harry Potter, but what we have neglected to realize is that he's been in the public eye since he was a child. Kicking off his career as the boy wizard back in 2001, he made a lot of money as a star of one of the most successful film franchises of all time. Though he became very rich and successful, Radcliffe also has had his share of scrutiny from the public. All the money and fame that he has can't take away from the struggle Daniel has had with fame since being a child. Speaking out about those struggles, Daniel has said, quote, people will boo you even if you're a child. End quote. Daniel isn't on social media because he chooses to keep that kind of negativity out of his life. And these days, things seem to be better for the actor, but for a while, he wasn't happy with his place in Hollywood, regardless of his riches. At number 5, Avicii. Tim Bergling, also known as Avicii, was a DJ, producer, and musician well known across the world. His death back in April 2018 shook the music world. Although he was known for producing some killer music, he struggled a lot with his image. Even though he was one of the most successful artists in the world, and having sold over 10 million albums and having a net worth of 50 million dollars, Avicii was known to struggle with his health and his fame, even going so far as to take a break from music back in 2014. The DJ went on to say that the party 
partying and wild times that are associated with his job are really what had taken the biggest toll on his health and that he didn't enjoy that aspect of his job. During his break he had two surgeries to remove his gallbladder and appendix so he really did have a struggle with his health as well. Avicii sadly took his own life after struggling a lot with his mental health and some believe that it was mostly caused by his job and being unable to cope with his growing fame. At number 4, Britney Spears. I feel like this one is a given, especially after seeing everything she's been through. But Britney Spears has certainly lived a life of being rich but unhappy. She is still a very successful celebrity having grown up in the spotlight and growing into a global sensation and she's become incredibly wealthy as well. However, because of the conservatorship that governed much of her life, taking away a lot of her freedom and forcing her to do things that she doesn't want to do, she certainly wasn't living life to its fullest. She's starting to regain control of her life now and she's even getting married, but Britney's case is a tragic example of the dark side of fortune and how it can be used to control people and their lives. At number 3, Gigi Hadid. You would think that being a celebrity would grant you all of these amazing perks and you would have so many friends because of it, but apparently that's not exactly true and being a celebrity can be pretty isolating. At least that's what supermodel Gigi Hadid has said in regards to fame. Even though she's very rich and famous, during a 2019 interview with Elle magazine, Gigi has said that because of her job and maintaining her income, she's lost a lot of friends. Speaking on this, Gigi said quote, I've lost a lot of friends because I'll get busy for a short period of time and they're not reaching out, but if I don't reach out, then it's like I've changed. End quote. She said that because her work is so demanding, a lot of people don't understand how taxing it can really be, so when she disappears for work, some people don't really wait for her to return and just move on. To further explain her struggles with keeping her social life and work life in check, Gigi said quote, There are people who understand that I love them and who know that when I get back to town, I'm going to call them. But sometimes I can't call every day because I'm in weird places. Because a lot of the time I feel suffocated by my own work ethic and by the expectations I put on myself. It's really nice when you have people who say it's okay to take time for yourself. End quote. Her work has taken over her life, but it's not like she can really stop working because she needs to be able to support herself and her family. At number two, Megan Fox. Megan Fox had a really good career until she was essentially blacklisted after having her reputation tarnished by Michael Bay. She made a lot of money, but the downside to this success was the typecasting that she faced as always being the sex symbol in whatever production she was part of. Throughout her career, Megan has been sexualized by Hollywood, and people have made comments about her appearance and personality, some of those comments being quite negative, and Megan has said that it's not fair that she and many other celebrities are just expected to treat this criticism as normal or part of the job. In an interview, Megan said, quote, I don't think people understand. They think we should just shut the F up and stop complaining because you live in a big house or you drive a Bentley, so your life must be so great. But what people don't realize is that fame, whatever your worst experience in high school when you were being bullied by those 10 kids in high school, fame is that, but on a global scale, where you're being bullied by millions of people constantly. Not everyone understands that's the deal. End quote. I get upset just reading hate comments on the internet, so to experience that on a global scale is something that I couldn't even imagine. All the money in the world can't heal that kind of pain. And finally, at number one, FKA Twigs. For singer FKA Twigs, she's had her fair share of grievances with her career, fame, and money. Though she's rich and successful, she still struggles with her place in the media. She rose to fame through her music, which already got her attention, but her high profile relationships also sent her a new audience that affected her a lot. She experienced this when she was dating Twilight star Robert Pattinson. Because Robert had such a huge following, some of the attention rubbed off on Twigs, and a lot of that attention was negative. In an interview in 2015, the singer spoke out about her experience with fame in regards to her relationship and she said that she was struggling with the public's perception of her. As soon as they went public with their relationship, Twigs found herself under a spotlight that she wasn't ready for and speaking on this she said quote, It's really hard. I can't begin to explain how awful it is. It makes you want to stop everything sometimes. It makes you want to smash your face into a mirror. End quote. Though she was struggling with the public eye, she did however say that it was worth it because she loved Robert so much. The boost in popularity gave her more fans and in turn made her more money, but at what cost? At number 10, Dolly Parton. We're covering some of the richest celebrities, so of course we have to start with one of the richest, yet most wholesome and unapologetic people out there, Dolly freaking Parton. Dolly is a singer, songwriter, actress, businesswoman, philanthropist, and just all around amazing human being. She started from nothing, and now she has her own freaking theme park. Dolly has a net worth of about $650 million, which isn't as much as other celebrities included on this list, but it's still quite substantial. With her riches, she's been able to do 
a lot for herself and others, but how did she manage to acquire this fortune? Well, other than her businesses, a lot of her money has no doubt come from her illustrious music career. Dolly has sold over 100 million albums, which already made her a lot of money, but because her music is so popular, she has also had people cover her songs, which have boosted her income. One of the most famous cases of this was Whitney Houston's cover of I Will Always Love You from the movie The Bodyguard in 1992. Just on that film alone, Dolly made $20 million in royalties. Dolly's song catalog is also worth at least $300 million, so that certainly adds to her riches as well. At number 9, Kylie Jenner. Now this list is ranked with the richest celebrity at number 1, so you might be surprised that Kylie Jenner is only sitting at number 9. Well that's because she's not as rich as you might think. Though Miss Kylie is very wealthy, she isn't the billionaire that we were led to believe she was. Back in March 2019, Forbes magazine dubbed Kylie Jenner the world's youngest self-made billionaire. This caused quite a stir because people started debating whether or not she could actually call herself self-made, or if she was even actually actually a billionaire. While the self-made argument is still up for debate, the billionaire thing has been disproven. Turns out that Kylie's net worth is only about $700 million rather than the $1.2 billion that was previously published. Now don't get me wrong, that's still a lot of money, but not as much as was previously published. As we all no doubt know, the majority of her earnings have come from her Kylie Cosmetics and Kylie Skin brands, which are super successful, but she's also part of the Kar Jenner family and they're all rolling in the dough anyway. Anyway. Before we carry on talking about more of the rich and famous people of Hollywood, why not take a quick moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Celine Dion. Now let's talk about this amazingly successful Canadian, Celine Dion. She makes Canada proud because of how successful she has become over the course of her career. With a net worth of about $800 million, you can certainly say that she's done well for herself. Celine has sold over $220 million albums albums worldwide, which has no doubt greatly contributed to her wealth and success, but another aspect of her career that has boosted her fortune has been her tours. Her most recent Courage tour sold out each of the 52 North American shows, and judging by the fact that Celine normally earns around $50 million in console revenue, you can see why she's so successful. What definitely contributed to her boost in fame was her contribution to the 1997 film Titanic, where her song My Heart Will Go On became famous, but it also won her an Oscar. Between 2000 and 2010, Celine was the highest grossing entertainer in the world, and her shows around the world added to her great success. At number 7, Madonna. Moving on from one powerhouse female performer to another, next up, let's talk about Madonna. Though she has had a questionable career as far as her scandals are concerned, that hasn't stopped her from becoming one of the richest celebrities out there. With a net worth of about $850 million, she's certainly as rich as they come. Madonna has been known to flex her riches by buying a very expensive things, but there's no shame in that because she earned every cent of her wealth through hard work and a long career. Some of the most expensive things that she's been known to have purchased include pieces by artists including Picasso, Damien Hirst, Diego Rivera, and Marilyn Minter. Madonna also owns around $100 million worth of real estate around the globe. On top of her earnings through her music and her investments in real estate, Madonna also has earned a substantial amount of money through her various clothing, skincare, fragrance, and accessory lines. At number 6, JK Rowling. Now although JK Rowling has become very controversial in the last little while, we do have to talk about her career and success because no matter what scandal she's been in, she's still very wealthy. How long is that going to last at this rate with people no longer supporting her is another topic for another day. Anyways, let's talk about how rich this author is. With the success of the Wizarding World franchise, JK Rowling has become one of the world's most successful celebrities with a net worth of around $1 billion. This all came from the success of the Harry Potter books, which has sold over 500 million copies worldwide, being published in different languages and loved by a large audience. With the success of the books, the series got incredibly successful film adaptations as you no doubt know, and this also generated billions of dollars at the box office. Now JK is known to be quite private about her finances and has denied being a billionaire in the past, but the public has the facts and she's a lot richer than she claims to be. 
At number five, Sir Paul McCartney. Now, you don't get to become a sir for no reason. And Sir Paul McCartney has certainly proved that he is deserving of such a title. He's one of the most successful musicians in history and has a net worth of about $1.2 billion. Though he first got a success through the Beatles, who sold over 600 million albums worldwide, he was also able to boost his own success as a solo artist, having released countless successful hits and having sold out tours worldwide. In a year, Paul earned 50 to 70 million dollars, with a lot of those earnings coming from royalties generated by his own songs and copyrights to thousands of others. Though a pretty big financial mistake was made when the publishing rights to the Beatles songs were sold, McCartney was certainly able to bounce back with his earnings from his solo career. With that in mind though, imagine how much richer he would be if he was still able to earn royalties from the Beatles songs as well. At number four, Jay-Z. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of the rap world and one of the artists who's dominated much of that side of the music industry. We're talking about rapper Jay-Z. Now he doesn't often flex his money as he's really not all that boastful, at least not compared to other artists like Kanye West, whom we will talk about later. It may surprise you that Jay-Z actually has a net worth of about $1.3 billion. Obviously the majority of his riches comes from his music career, but there are other factors that play into his large net worth. Jay-Z seems to be quite a savvy businessman and investor. He sold portions of his companies to big conglomerates for hundreds of millions of dollars. He also owns equity stakes in some of the world's biggest companies like SpaceX, Outly, Uber, Sweetgreen, and Ethos. And on top of that, when you combine the rapper's net worth with that of his wife, their total net worth approaches nearly $2 billion. Jay-Z and Beyonce also own hundreds of millions of dollars worth of art and real estate, showing off just how well off they really are. At number three, Kim Kardashian. Up next, we've gotta talk about the one and only Kim Kardashian. Kim, much like her sister Kylie, has her multiple businesses to thank for her riches. It has been reported that Kim has a net worth of about $1.4 billion. Kim has had many businesses over the years and has other ways of gaining lump sums of income, but by far her most valuable assets are her makeup brand, KKW Beauty, and her shapewear and loungewear brand, Skims. KKW alone brings about $100 million of revenue per year year and is valued at about $700 million. She recently sold a 20% stake in the KKW Beauty Company to Cody, the same company that bought Kylie Cosmetics, but even though she doesn't own 100% of the company, only holding about 72% of the company, Kim still gets a pre-tax stake of $500 million. Skims, on the other hand, is worth a lot more than KKW Beauty and has an approximate valuation of about $1.6 billion, and though Kim only owns about 50 to 60% of the company, she still has a pre-tax stake of about 800 to 960 million dollars. So to those who doubt how successful Kim really is, the success of her businesses really says it all. At number two, Kanye West. Now we can't talk about Kim K without talking about her now ex-husband, kind of. Kanye West. Now, Kanye's net worth is debated by some depending on what sources you look at. According to Forbes, the rapper's net worth is sitting around $1.6 billion, but another source clocks it in at $6.6 billion. Now, I know that is a huge difference in numbers, but honestly, you don't have to think about it too hard because either way, he's freaking rich, so that's really all that matters here. Kanye's large net worth is thanks to a number of his assets from his music catalog that's worth $110 million to his real estate holdings worth $100 million million to his Yeezy brand that's worth three to five billion and generates over a billion dollars in revenue. From all sources of income, Kanye brings in about 100 to 200 million dollars annually. So again, he's super rich. What helps out the most when it comes to his earnings from his Yeezy brand is the fact that he owns 100% of the company. So everything that is earned goes completely to Kanye. So yeah, he is super rich, but I'm pretty sure we already knew that, just maybe not how rich. And finally at number one, George Lucas. Lucas. According to sources, director, screenwriter, and producer George Lucas is the richest celebrity in the world with a net worth of around $10 billion. We all know him as the brains behind the Star Wars franchise, so it comes as no surprise to see just how much money this franchise has made him. Much like Kanye West, George owned 100% of the rights to Star Wars, so everything that the franchise made went back to him. However, in 2012, he sold Star Wars to Disney for $4 billion in cash and stock. This was a pretty good business decision since he not only made billions off that sale, but he's never sold a single Disney share and with the company booming, he just keeps raking in the money. A very smart choice on his part. 
Kicking off our list is Hilary Duff. She became a teen icon when she took on the role of Lizzie McGuire, but sadly, all good things cannot last forever. Preteens were devastated all over the world when the series came to an end, but were thrilled when they announced the Lizzie McGuire movie. Everyone was hoping there'd be a sequel, but apparently the reason it didn't happen was because of a money dispute. According to Entertainment Weekly, the sequel was canceled when Hillary's mom, Susan Duff, wouldn't accept Disney's deal for it. It was reported that she was offered a $500,000 bonus for the sequel if the first one reached 50 million. But the momager wanted to receive the bonus immediately rather than waiting. She spoke on it and said, Disney thought they'd be able to bully us into accepting whatever offer they wanted to make, and they couldn't. We walked away from a sequel, they walked away from the franchise. Boom. Next up in spot number nine is Steve Whitmire, also known as Kermit the Frog. The voice actor and puppeteer was fired from Disney for a few different reasons, but it's been reported that money was part of it. One of the reasons was because he refused to work on a particular project because of a contract dispute involving him wanting more money. According to THR, Disney and the Muppet Studio said his way of negotiation delayed productions and said that they had issues with him for many years. Turns out issues with him demanding more money goes back to the early days when he was actually on Sesame Street where he voiced Ernie and Kermit for years. Side note, I had no idea that it was a one actor playing both parts. Just saying, you learned something new today. A source spoke on it and said, people think he left Sesame Street to focus on the Muppets. He was actually fired for demanding too much money. Well, you know what they say, it's not easy being green. <laughs> Get it? Stealing the number eight spot is J Lo. We've seen her star in a variety of movies, but people loved seeing her as a judge on American Idol in season 10. But in July 2012, she announced to Ryan Seacrest that she decided not to return for the next season so that she could focus on her music career and two children. But then articles started surfacing, revealing that she was actually let go by Fox because she was asking for a $2 million raise in her salary. That would have brought her up to $17 million. But regardless of the reason, her story did have a happy ending because a year later, Later, the producers decided to give her the raise and more and welcomed her back on for $17.5 million per season until she left in 2016. Talk about the deal. <laughs> yes, they said no, and then they got, brought you back with more than you asked for. Moving on to number seven, we have Chad Michael Murray. He broke out into the spotlight after booking a lead role on the hit TV series One Tree Hill. The show lasted nine seasons, but Chad's time ended after the sixth. News broke that he would not be returning for the seventh season, and fans had no idea why, nor were we happy about it. Turns out that money was the driving factor, and since everyone's salary was going up the following season, he kind of expected the same. But instead, the network didn't want to give him a raise or any pay at all. He told some of his fans that they fired him to save their studio some money. Video footage leaked of him taking pictures with some fans in North Carolina back in 2009, and a fan asked why he isn't gonna be on the show. In the video, he says, they don't want me. I'm not joking, they're not bringing me back because they want to save money. <laughs> Number six is Lauren Cohen, also known as Maggie from the TV series The Walking Dead. She was a staple character on the show, which is why it shocked fans back in 2018 when they learned that she was in a salary standoff against the network. AMC had to decide if they were going to axe her character or accept her salary negotiations. But her co-star, Kahari Payton, came to her defense and posted a picture of her to his Twitter with the caption that said, Pay the woman. Maggie said that maybe it was a sign for her to leave since things just weren't lining up in many ways, even outside of the salary raise. Ultimately, they actually let her go, but she was getting offers elsewhere for new roles, so it all worked out in the end. Halfway through at number five is Crispin Glover. He's famously known for his role as George McFly in the iconic movie Back to the Future. And if you're a fan, then you've probably wondered why he never returned for the sequels. There's been a few different speculations as to why, and one of them is money. Turns out he had asked for more money. He spoke on it and said, People say I asked for the same amount of money as Michael J. Fox, which is a total fabrication. I wanted to be in the movie, but the offer was less than half of what Leah Thompson and Tom Wilson, who had similar sized roles, it just wasn't fair. He only got really mad with the studio because they used him in the sequel without his consent. They actually took old prosthetic molds that they had on his face in the first movie and put a new actor into them and then like intersected old footage somehow. Good news is he won the lawsuit for 
it. So we did get some money from them. Here now at number four, we have Suzanne Summers. This one goes further back to the fifth season of Three's Company in 1980. It was one of the most popular shows on television at the time, and the actress and her co-star, John Ritter, earned Golden Globe nominations for it. But Suzanne was not happy and asked the ABC executives for a raise. She was making $30,000 an episode at the time, and they offered her an extra $5,000 per episode. But she wanted much more than that. She had a different number in mind. She actually demanded $150,000 an episode. The studio denied her request and basically laughed in her face. And then she refused to film. Like purposely, she would not show up to set on her scheduled days, so she was fired from the show. Which makes sense. Taking the number three spot is Terrence Howard. The actor earned the highest paycheck on the set of Iron Man. He was said to have earned $4.5 million, which was actually more than Robert Downey Jr., who played the actual hero. But when the sequel came, he was told he was going to get a pay cut because after the success of the first one, they were going to pay Robert more. Rightfully so. Karen says he was set to make $8 million for the second film, but they only offered him $1 million. He was not okay with this and even started to bash Robert and the studio publicly. And that is when he got fired and they hired Don Cheadle instead. Rolling into number two is Sean Connery, but many people will still refer to him as James Bond. He's been very open about his feelings about the franchise, saying that he has grown bored with it, but also exposed the financial issues that he had with it. According to Express, he signed on to You Only Live Once for $750,000, plus a 25% share of merchandising, which he was cool with. But when it came to the next Bond film, he declared that he would only return to the franchise if they paid him $1 million plus a percentage of the film's gross. They were not okay with this deal and instead they hired George Lazby for $50,000. So they actually saved money this way. That's how you do it, my friends. Showing everyone up at number one is Charlie Sheen, which is not shocking. This one is so crazy because he was actually making the most ridiculous amount of money compared to anyone on our list today, yet he still had the audacity to ask for more. He was the highest paid actor on television for his role on Two and a Half Men, making approximately $2 million per episode. God forbid that was not enough money, he demanded a pay raise to $3 million an episode in order to continue the series. CBS executives thought that it was ridiculous, duh, and declined his demands. That is when he started to like spiral completely out of control and started bashing Chuck Lorre, the producer. So they just fired him instead. In at number 10, Hilary Duff. Hilary Duff was on top of the Disney World for years, starring in the hit show Lizzie McGuire. But after the massive success of the 2003 Lizzie McGuire movie, she demanded more. Since the movie was such a hit, Disney asked for a second Lizzie McGuire movie to be made, but the movie stalled because of negotiations. Susan Duff, Hilary Duff's mother and manager, says she asked the promised bonus to be paid immediately, but Disney did not want to oblige. Duff also said that Hilary was getting low-balled for the Lizzie McGuire series, and they were paying Hilary $35,000 per episode, even though other networks were offering six figures. Because of these contract negotiations, both the TV series and plans for the movie sequel ended. And I am so disappointed because Lizzie McGuire movie is literally one of the best movies of all time and I would die to see a second. It is so great. In at number 9, Kirstie Alley. 1982 star Trek II The Wrath of Khan opened with a young Kirstie Alley playing the character Savik. We eventually learned that Alley is a trainee and it was all a simulation, but those moments with Alley on screen made a deep impact on the whole movie. The character of Savik appears twice more in the franchise, but not played by Alley. When asked why she was booted from the sequels, Ali told StarTrek.com in 2016 that it was because of money. Apparently, she didn't ask for more money and said the franchise offered her less money for a sequel, which is like basically unheard of. She said, quote, that never made sense to me. Like, you're not paying me as much for the first one, and it's a bigger role. She claimed she tried to inquire about the low ball, but instead of answers, she was just cut. In at number eight, Crispin Glover. In 1985's Back to the Future, Crispin Glover played Marty McFly's dad, George. McFly. And even though the movie was uber successful, Glover did not appear in the sequel. His absence in the second film even led to a lawsuit. The story is that Glover was unhappy with the script for the second movie and demanded the same salary as the film's lead, Michael J. Fox, who made $1 million. But in 2012, Glover says that was a lie and he was only offered $150,000 for the sequel, which was half the amount offered to stars who had similar sized roles in the film. He also said when he tried to negotiate, the offer was actually decreased by $25,000. The film ended up casting someone else in Glover's 
role, but put a mold of Glover's face on this actor's face. Then Glover sued the film for using his likeness and got $760,000. And at number 7, Bruce Willis. The Expendables franchise is full of huge stars like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jason Statham, to name a few. Bruce Willis joined the cast in the 2010 movie, along with a 2012 sequel where he picked up a larger role. And even though he was set to star in the third film, it didn't happen, and Harrison Ford took the role instead. Later, it was reported that monetary disputes were the reason for the change. The Hollywood Reporter exposed, quote, Willis was offered $3 million for four days of consecutive work, and he allegedly demanded a pay bump to $4 million, $1 million per day, but the studio did not oblige and Ford was cast within days. In at number 6, Marcus Chong. Marcus Chong, who played Tank in The Matrix, was one of the only members of the cast to survive. However, he didn't show up in the sequels, causing suspicion. The franchise wanted Chong to be a part, however he claims he was offered too little. In Chong's own 45 minute YouTube documentary called The Marcus Chong Story, he says he was offered $250,000 to appear in 2003's The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, but he wanted $1 million. The film said no, so strangely enough Chong came back asking for $500,000 or to work for free. Didn't really understand that part, but apparently the franchise was done with the games and decided to just cut him instead. Halfway at number 5, Sean Connery. Sean Connery is known by many as the best James Bond, and fans were devastated when he was quickly replaced. He first played the role of 007 in 1962, then he played in four more movies before he decided to ask for more money from the franchise. By the time Connery starred in 1967's You Only Live Twice, for which he was paid $750,000 plus a 25% share of merchandising, he was apparently just kind of bored with the role and took a risky move by asking for more money. He demanded $1 million, but the franchise declined. As a result, George Lazenby was given the role to the dismay of fans. After that film was hit with terrible reviews, Connery was asked back and he made $1.25 million for 1971's Diamonds Are Forever. And at number 4, Maggie Ree. Maggie starred on The Walking Dead right from the first season and was a staple in the show, but in season 9, she disappeared from the show, leaving many to wonder why. It was later reported that money was the reason. The show did not meet her monetary demands, so she was cut from season 9 and went on to play in ABC's action dramedy Whiskey Cavalier. But apparently her time with the show was already on the rocks, and she was bored of playing the same character for 8 years. Apparently she also wanted to explore comedy and more happy projects. In the end, since she had not been killed off the show, just written off, she did come back for the 11th and final season. In at number 3, Suzanne Summers. Suzanne Summers starred in ABC's Three's Company, which was one of the most successful sitcoms ever. The show chronicled two women living with a man in a house in Santa Monica and followed their antics. After a few years, Summers decided to request a raise for this successful show, especially since learning her male counterpart on the show, John Ritter, was paid $150,000 per episode while she was only making $30,000 per episode. Apparently when she confronted the network about this, they offered her a $5,000 per episode raise, but that wasn't enough. So she didn't show up for the filming and was fired. She was then replaced on the show with a look-alike character. Apparently her firing was a part of a bigger picture, and there were other women who wanted more money from the network, so they decided to make an example out of Summers by cutting her. And at number 2, Terrence Howard. Marvel fans first saw Terrence Howard playing the role of James Rhodey Rhodes, who later became War Machine. But then in Iron Man 2, Howard was not in the film, rather Don Cheadle played Rhodey in the MCU after that. Howard did not keep his anger to himself and openly discussed why he was axed. In 2013 on Watch What Happens Live, Howard told Andy Cohen that when it was time to make Iron Man 2, Marvel only wanted to pay him one eighth of what they owed him. Howard even reached out to Robert Downey Jr., who did not offer any support. Howard even claimed he took a $1 million pay cut to get Downey Jr. cast in his role, to which Marvel denied. In the end, Howard retracted many of his callouts and claimed him and Downey Jr. were on good terms again. And finally, number one, Robert Duvall. Duvall first became critically acclaimed through his role as Tom Hagen in The Godfather. He even earned an Academy Award nomination for his work in the film and starred in the second movie as well. But he did not make it into part 3 of the film, apparently due to money. Speaking in 2004, Duvall explained that he not only left because he wanted more money than he was making, he was more so just disgusted at how much more some other actors were making. Saying, quote, I said I would work easily if they paid Al Pacino twice what they paid me, that's fine. But not three or four times, which is what they did. In 2010, he explained he had no regrets about not appearing in the film because of the poor reviews that it got. 
At number 10 we have Daniel Kim and Grace Park who acted in the rebooted CBS action crime drama series Hawaii Five-0 from the start of 2010. For seven long years the duo played their characters Chin Ho Kelly and Konu Kolokoa until they were forced off the show in 2017 because of a contract dispute. Reportedly Daniel and Grace were both looking to receive equal pay that their co-stars Alex O'Loughlin and Scott Kahn were obtaining. It was stated that CBS would not waiver their final decision and set a disclosed amount of 10 to 15 percent lower pay grade than their castmates. Eventually, CBS went on to write Daniel and Grace out of their show in the eighth season, and in it, their removal was addressed in true drama show fashion during the premiere. Funnily enough, though, it's said that the drama off screen was even juicier. Despite the network issuing glowing statements in regards to their departed stars, Grace was all but thrilled when Peter Lenkoff, her former showrunner, released a tweet with indications that Grace had left the series to focus on family. Grace detailed the occurrence by explaining how the situation felt very charged to her, as well as that she did not feel it was right of Peter to make a statement on her behalf, regardless of whether or not he had good intentions. She finalized by informing Deadline that she cared about Peter as an individual, but that she did not leave the show because of what he implied. At number 9 we have Valerie Harper's self-titled sitcom where she starred alongside Jason Bateman with high spirits due to the fact that the show's ratings were increasing. Valerie was said to be headed in a promisingly strong direction for its third season and Harper decided this was as good as any time to inquire about a raise. In accordance with People by Valerie's third year, she was contracted to receive $56,750 per episode with an additional 10% of the show's adjusted gross profits. Rather, Valerie requested there be a new contract drawn of 100,000 and 35% of added profits instead. When the studio refused to play into Valerie's demands, she pulled out an old ruse that once worked for her 12 years prior as the star of Rhoda. For this one, her request for a raise was denied. She denied showing up for work until she got what she wanted. However, her holdout tactic was not successful the following time, as Valerie's production team agreed to terms of a new contract worth $65,000 per episode with 12.5% of profits. This is what sparked Valerie's return to set, but she was let go after filming a single episode. As a result, the Valerie writers killed off her character and rebranded the show as Valerie's Family for the third season. The following season, the show got a new name once more called The Hogan Family, and while the sitcom maintained its popularity without its original star, Valerie's karma came in full circle when she successfully sued production on the grounds of wrongful dismissal. At number 8 we have the crazy saga of Marcus Chong and The Matrix. His story comes after the success of The Matrix when the film creators had pitched for a double sequel. The writing slash director team of the Wachowskis initially wanted to reprise Marcus with a reported offer of $250,000, but Marcus was seeking a whopping million dollars, a seemingly bizarre negotiation tactic which presumably later backfired fired and got him removed from the franchise. He was killed off between the first and final movies. Allegedly after asking for a million, Marcus's lawyer delivered an ultimatum to the Wachowskis in a letter. In it, a matching sum of $500,000 with added bonuses and promises to receive press premiere guarantees was offered, or oppositely, Marcus would do the movies for free. Following the latter, Marcus apparently publicly added that he was being threatened and spoke on the behalf of Andy Wachowski on a call, which brought about more drama and confusion. At one point he was reportedly taken into custody for making threats and later unsuccessfully sued the production company and distributors of The Matrix. At number 7 we have Muppet star Steve Whitmire. Despite there being several reported reasonings for the Kermit the Frog voice actor and puppeteer's acts from Disney, the big deal breaker was supposedly money. Apparently one of the reasons given for Steve's dismissal was his refusal to work on a specific project because of an alleged contract dispute. However, Steve told The Hollywood Reporter that he was a casualty of a classified contract dispute between AFTRA and Disney Labor Relations. According to THR, Disney and the Muppets studio though, Steve's negotiation tactics pushed back production for many years, even going as far back as the Sesame Street days of voicing Ernie and Kermit. A source informed Gizmodo that he was let go for demanding too much money and not for focusing on the Muppets after Sesame Street. At number 6 we have former Family Matter actress Jamie Foxworth. Now there's no hard confirmation from the cast nor crew as to why Jamie was ever dismissed, but there have been so many rumors stringed from her role's strange removal on the show, where her then character Judy exits the scene up the stairs in season 4 and never comes back down. 
According to FM's co-creator William Bickley, Jamie's exit came about because of budget considerations, but many allege that her mother was behind the actress's dismissal. A mysteriously reported BET article hinted that the responsibility should be placed on her mother and then manager Gwen Fox in light of Jamie's contract not being renewed for demanding more money. The position Gwen held makes the story plausible, but regardless, Jamie's career never fully recovered from the early setback. Still, Jamie has kept a pretty lighthearted and humorous attitude about the entire ordeal. At number 5 we have Crispin Glover and why he never returned for the Back to the Future sequel. Crispin had switched out his story numerous times, but one standing point was the studio not meeting his pay demands. He explained in an AV Club interview how he was offered $150,000 to reprise his George McFly role, but this was far less than what co-stars Tom Wilson and Leah Thompson were working for. In the opinion of Crispin, the producers were trying to force him out and punish him with physically uncomfortable scenes for questioning the script. Crispin claimed he would have experienced whatever discomfort needed if he was being properly compensated. Therefore, when the actor tried his hand at negotiation, the higher ups apparently lowered the amount even further, to an alleged $25,000 instead. Crispin chalked this up to them not wanting to work with him, yet The Hollywood Reporter featured a slightly different spin, where they spoke about Crispin not liking the ideal script, so he demanded $100 million to take the role back. According to Crispin though, this alleged fabrication was merely a quote campaign smear tactic that he was supposedly asked to receive the same salary which Michael J. Fox was reigning in at the time. At number 4 we have crime scene investigation actors Georgia Fox and George Eads. The two stars of CSI faced intense behind the scenes drama while filming the show because they were both eventually removed after allegedly refusing to show up for filming. In accordance with people both actors were dissatisfied with the results of their proposed raises of approximately 20000 per episode. When the actors attempted to hold out for more they got snipped out the equation. CBS's co-president Leslie Moonves made a point to state that a contract is a contract contract, and that the company was maintaining the future of the network television business. Although there is a happier ending for this one, as both Georgia and George were invited to take their jobs back, but their rehire came with some new ground rules. The raises initially offered were revoked, resulting in the actors' negotiation tactics, costing them an approximate $1.76 billion. Big yikes. Even worse, George once claimed he wasn't even being petty and that he merely overslept when he didn't show up to work, rather than the hinted monetary gain story that was originally created. At number 3 we have iconic Disney star Hilary Duff who was a staple for all early 2000s preteens with her crimped hair and then sweet style. The reason why Hilary and Paolo's Lizzie McGuire 2 manifestation didn't play out in real life was because of reported money disputes. Without Hilary there would surely be no Lizzie and apparently Hilary wanted more than what she was making then. According to Entertainment Weekly, the LM franchise closed off when Susan Duff, Hilary's then momager, refused Disney's deal for a sequel. Reportedly, Hillary was offered $500,000 in bonus for the second film if the first film surpassed $50 million. This was said to be a huge increase from the $100,000 bonus Disney originally offered the pair, along with part of a $4 million offer for its sequel, quote, against 4% of the studio's gross for the film. In full, Hillary's Lizzie payday exceeded this, but her mother expected the bonus to come immediately as opposed to waiting. In retaliation, Disney withdrew their deal completely while effectively axing the Lizzie McGuire franchise. In light of the incident, Susan said to Entertainment Weekly how Disney tried to quote bully them into what they wanted and was unsuccessful. So in turn, she and her daughter turned away from a sequel while the company ditched an entire series. At number 2 we have Walking Dead, Maggie's actress Lauren Cohen. Lauren's character was surely a staple in the WD franchise for nearly a decade, but in 2018 AMC had to complicatedly decide to give in to the actress then contract demands or remove her from her role. In her Entertainment Weekly interview, Lauren admitted that she was taken aback by her negotiation, which indicated that maybe it was time to leave. She recalls being baffled and feeling like it was just not a fit anymore due to her and AMC not lining up in so many ways. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Lauren was already actively seeking new jobs around this time and and was receiving multiple. As a result, she was no longer a part of the Walking Dead series, but the final decision to let her go was unusually a huge departure from that of the comic book series on which the show bases itself, though not entirely unlikely. 
However, Lauren could potentially see the return of her character Maggie in the future, despite her character being offed, as her ending was technically left up in the air. At number one, we have Iron Man actor Terrence Howard, whose leave is somewhat of a sticky situation. It's difficult to say for certain if he was fired or pushed out, but no doubt his demise in the Iron Man franchise had the same end result. While Terrence starred in the first Iron Man film and was reportedly making more than leading actor Robert Downey Jr., he was excluded from the second, and apparently there are several reasons. The main one stemmed from an alleged battle over pay. Despite him being the big bill topper in the first film, Robert Downey soon caught the title of the world's highest paid actors for Forbes for three consecutive years and moved into Terrence's money spot by the time of the second film. Terrence's top spot of $3.5 million in pay supposedly stemmed from the combination of risk associated with the Robert Downey bets at the time, as well as his Oscar nomination for Hustle & Flow. In Terrence's explanation, the reason behind Robert's earnings so much in the subsequent Iron Man films is alleged because the studio was borrowing from Terrence to pay Robert, and he further claimed that he was set to accumulate $8 million for the second movie. Instead, Marvel Studios supposedly reworked their offered contract and reduced it to $1 one million, with plans of using the remaining dough to pay Robert. Finally, once Terrence pushed back, Marvel rumoredly closed their deal entirely and hired Don Cheadle in place of Terrence. And at number 10, Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson went through the traumatic experience of losing her mother, brother, and nephew on the same night of October 24th of 2008. Unfortunately, her family was targeted and killed by an assailant. After the incident, she went into hiding to protect herself from the world. She wasn't able to open up about her time away until nearly two years after. When she was featured on VH1's Behind the Music, she spoke about that time saying, quote, For almost two weeks straight, I was inside one room with just family and friends, coming in and out because of course the press was everywhere. She says at the time she relied heavily on her family and faith, and she did not want to speak to anyone. During this time, she was offered a role in a major movie, but decided to turn it down so she could focus on getting better. When she was finally ready to get back into the spotlight, she performed the Star Spangled Banner to open the 2009 Super Bowl. And at number 9, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle had one of the most successful comedy careers of all time, until he suddenly disappeared from his comedy show and wasn't seen in public for years after. In 2005, he was riding a wave of fame fueled by his hugely successful television show. But instead of continuing with Chappelle's show, Dave turned down $50 million and essentially went into hiding. It was later revealed that he went to South Africa, but he didn't talk about why. According to the LA Times, he'd cut off communication with friends, family, and professional contacts too. A few years later, he started doing comedy again and made some appearances at low-key comedy clubs. When talking with David Letterman in 2014, he said he was burnt out and needed a reset and to spend more time with his family. Chappelle said, quote, It's just you do what you feel like you need to do. There are other things in life that I do not purchase with money that are very valuable. And at number 8, Richard Simmons. In December of 2014, TMZ reported that Richard Simmons hadn't been seen by his friends in nearly a year. This is obviously very shocking, and led many to ask where he was, from being in danger or just going off the grid. All this led to the public demanding the LAPD do a welfare check at him on his home, which they did in 2015, and he was found in his house completely fine. But that didn't stop speculation. The National Enquirer even ran one story claiming he was transitioning into a woman. This prompted him to retaliate with a lawsuit. When the story got too big to ignore, Simmons told the Today Show, quote, No one is holding me in my house as a hostage. I just sort of wanted to be a little bit of a loner for a little while. By March of 2017, it had been three years and he was still not seen out. The speculation surrounding him got so big, a podcast was even started to chronicle his disappearance. He is now back and even starting new projects. In at number 7, Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle became an instant sensation after she competed on Britain's Got Talent in 2009. Before the show, she was a volunteer church worker with an amazing voice, but after she was a household name. In the middle of the show, she started to get bombarded by fans in public, with some even coming to her home and knocking at her door. It got so bad she was forced to move to an undisclosed location to wait out the end of the show, and so she could practice for her final performances in peace. Her brother John told People, quote, She has had people banging on her door. It's been really terrible for her. Judge for the show Piers Morgan told BBC it was so bad at one point, Boyle was considering leaving the show altogether. 
saying, quote, she is very distraught to the extent where she packed her bags and was going to leave the show. In the end, Boyle did not win the show, but it was the start of her massive solo career. In at number six, Michael Jackson. At one point, the king of pop was the most famous person in the world, and his loyal fans and paparazzi were obsessed with him to the point they would stalk him in public and show up to his private home. Near the end of his life, one of his close friends exposed that Michael was so done with the fame, he wanted to go into hiding. That friend named Donny Osmond met Michael as child stars, and they connected on their similar upbringings. According to the Las Vegas Review Journal, Jackson called Osmond about 18 months before he died. Jackson told him that he had rented a motor home with his kids and he was hiding out from paparazzi in the desert. Jackson apparently said, quote, I just want to hide. I want to get away from people. Osmond said that after that, Michael isolated himself from the world completely. Halfway number five, J.D. Salinger. J.D. Salinger's classic book, The Catcher in the Rye, is one that I'm sure all of you have most likely read. I think I did either in high school or middle school. Since this book and the author are so famous, it's crazy to learn that he was a recluse most of his life. Even more shocking, the author passed away in 2010 at the age of 91 years old. In 2013, a book was released on the author's life, revealing just how reclusive and private that he was. It was suggested that he suffered from PTSD from his time serving in World War II. Allegedly, the author carried six chapters of his famous novel with him when he landed on the beach on D-Day. Shortly after fighting, he checked himself into an institution to help him cope with all he had experienced and seen during the war. Even more insane, after he left this institution, he signed up for more fighting, volunteering to defeat the Germans. One of the authors of this book claimed that the effects of the war made Salinger turn to a life of isolation. Apparently, Salinger's book was rejected by one publisher because they found him to be too unstable. In at number four, Joe Strummer. Joe Strummer is the frontman for the band Clash, and years before his 2002 death, he became somewhat of a recluse. Back in 1982, the band started to struggle, so the band's manager, Bernie Rhodes, came up with an idea for Strummer to disappear from the public for a bit just to drum up publicity. The plan was for him to lay low in Texas, but before he was set to leave, he disappeared for real, telling nobody where he was going. For three weeks, not only did the public not know where he was, but his friends, family, and manager didn't know either. Weeks later, he was found living on the streets of Paris. While there, he ran the Paris Marathon and drank 10 pints of beer a night. Later, he revealed the whole thing was a mistake. This hardly helped with publicity for the band, and they broke up shortly after. And at number three, Agatha Christine. Agatha Christine is an interesting figure, being well known in the world of mystery and crime. She's also a best selling author and wrote the world's longest running play, The Mousetrap. For some reason, in the middle of her very successful career, she disappeared without a trace. On one random night, she left her seven year old daughter and drove off. The car was found abandoned a few miles away, but there was no sign of Agatha. Thousands of people came to look for her in that area, and nothing was found. Many in the town started speculating on where she could be, could she be in danger, or could this all be some sort of stunt? 11 days later, she was found at a spa, checked in under the name Teresa Neal, who was her husband's mistress at the time. She went back home with her husband and never spoke about it again. And at number two, Melania Trump. The president and the first lady are public figures, so they're expected to be out at public events to represent the country when asked. Many Americans were shocked when the first lady was out of public for a whopping 25 days, which is basically an eternity in politics. After speculation, the White House announced that she was recovering from a kidney procedure, but a lot of the public did not buy this. Some even speculated that she left the president and his administration was trying to hide it. Hashtag Where's Melania Trump even started trending on Twitter with claims that there were body doubles posing as Melania. Political analysts went on TV and explained the absence was unprecedented. She finally returned to her first lady duties on June 4th of 2018. When asked for more details on her disappearance, her team denied this, quote, citing the privacy laws to which Ms. Trump, like any other patient, is entitled. And finally, at number one, Rivers Cuomo. Rivers Cuomo, the frontman for Weezer, is also quite the recluse. True to his hipster ways, he likes living off the grid in nature where nobody can find him. In a 2005 Rolling Stone profile, Cuomo said it all started with a Tibetan Buddhist meditation retreat. He loved the alone time. After this, he tested just how long he could go in isolation. One time, he even spent 20 days in a closet in northern Massachusetts. But obviously, this level of isolation can be unhealthy, which he proved after he trapped himself in his LA apartment after a failed record. When the album Pinkerton did not live up to expectations, he quote, put fiberglass insulation over the windows and hung black sheets over the insulation, and painted all the walls black, disconnected his phone, and spent a lot of time with his pet Gecko. Thankfully, he grew out of these ways and is now married with kids, 
but he's still openly searching for meaning in life other than just working and touring. Starting off this countdown, we have Jerry Seinfeld. Have you seen that awkward encounter with Jerry Seinfeld and Kesha? My stomach literally hurts just watching it. Anyways, what happened was during a red carpet event, Kesha asked for a hug and he completely rejected her in the most awkward and cringy way. Apparently he has a strict no hugging rule, which I mean, that's fair, okay? I bet he would get swarmed with fans walking down the street all asking for hugs. Not only that though, but apparently he has a bit of an ego problem. He isn't just rude to fans, but also interviewers and other celebrities and talk show hosts. Seth Meyers and Larry King both said that Jerry was very rude to them while on their shows. In our ninth spot today, we have Lindsay Lohan. Again, her last name is pronounced Lohan, okay? Everyone's been saying Lohan for years, but it was recently revealed that we're wrong. It's Lohan, not Lohan. Anyways, the downfall of Lindsay is actually a really sad one. Everyone loves Mean Girls and Freaky Friday, okay? She was in some iconic movies. Sadly, she went on to have problems with the law and substance abuse. In 2007, she was arrested and convicted twice. That same year, she went to rehab. From 2007 to 2012, she spent 250 days in in different rehab centers. When she did get clean, she did star in a couple of shows, you know, guest starring, but apparently she was very difficult to work with. She would arrive late and didn't want to film her parts. Sometimes she didn't even want to get out of her trailer. In our eighth spot today, we have Amanda Bynes. Sadly, this is another amazingly talented actor that let drugs and alcohol get to them. In 2012 to 2013, Bynes was in multiple car accidents. She was charged with a DUI and was caught smoking and over the years, she has been arrested for drug possession. She is currently under conservatorship, which means that her mother is her legal guardian. Now she has changed a lot, okay? She goes on a number of rants on her social media and she even drastically changed her appearance. Amanda is going through a rough patch and is sadly also suffering from mental health issues. I just wish her all the best because I, honestly, I loved her when I was a kid. And I'd love for her to get back into acting, but her health is the number one priority right now. In our seventh spot today, we have Leah Michelle. <laughs> Oh man, Leah has literally been labeled as one of the biggest drama queens and divas in Hollywood. There's so much tea on her that like, I don't have time to talk about it all. But we have done numerous other videos on her so you can check that out. Anyways, a number of her Glee co-stars have said that it's a nightmare to work on set with her. Others claim that Leah would bully and belittle them on set and made life a living hell. Also, a number of cast members of color have come forward saying that they felt that Leah's hate towards them was racially motivated. And she's also been known to start unnecessary drama on set. Also, she once called background actors cockroaches and even burped directly in the face of a stand-in. So, how professional. Moving on to number six, we have Mike Myers. Mike Myers has played a number of characters in iconic movies like Hello, Austin Powers, Shrek. Anyways, apparently he's a control freak and a perfectionist, which makes it hard for the cast and crew on set. Not only that, but according to his co-stars from Cat in the Hat, wow, throwback, he kept everyone waiting and even had someone feed him chocolates on set. Another time, while on Conan O'Brien, he had staff running around trying to complete his demands. He wanted silk non-dairy creamer, Twizzlers, and raspberry seltzers. When the interns didn't get him the right brands that he liked, he made them go back and try again. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Justin Bieber. Now it seems like Bieber is in a better place, but for quite some time, he was acting like a big brat, according to a number of celebrities. As Justin started to get older, he started getting into a number of fights. He got arrested multiple times, and he was involved with a number of drug scandals. He also would show up late to concerts and events. In fact, John Bovey called him out, telling him to get his act together. He's also pissed off a number of celebrities, including Seth Rogen and Bill Hader, okay? How do you piss off those celebrities? They're so chill. Anyways, according to Bill Hader, when Justin hosted SNL, he showed up with a 20-person team to set. He said, and I quote, he had a guy holding a piece of pizza, a guy holding a Diet Coke, and going around stage, you're trying to fight through all these people to get dressed. Doesn't sound like a pleasant experience. Moving on to number four today, we have Charlie Sheen. The Two and a Half Men star has done some pretty wild and highly controversial things over the years that have completely ruined his reputation. Like, when he 
pulled a knife out on his dentist while undergoing treatment. Also, he's had a number of drug scandals, and then you have the scandal between him and his ex-wife, Denise Richards. Apparently, he was violent and physical with her on a number of occasions. There's also a rumor that he slept with over 5,000 different women. In fact, he was fired from Two and a Half Men because of his wild behavior. Since then, he hasn't really done much acting. Coming in at number three today, we have Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres was labeled as one of the most kind-hearted and generous celebrities out there. She constantly gave back to charity and helped people in need. But a couple of years ago, it was revealed that she might not be the nicest. I'm sure you all remember that huge scandal. When people were calling her and her team rude. It started with one of her former employees tweeting, and I quote, Right now, we all need a little kindness. You know, like Ellen DeGeneres always talks about. She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match everyone with $2 to the LA Food Bank. Now this tweet had thousands of replies with unpleasant stories about Ellen. Even some celebrities piped up to share their stories. In the end, it kind of tarnished her reputation. In our second spot today, we have Naomi Campbell. Model Naomi Campbell has been labeled as a very difficult model to work with. In fact, she even has had beef with Tyra Banks and Rihanna. Apparently, she She's very unreliable. When she books a job, people never know if she's gonna show up. So why bother even booking her in the first place if she's not gonna do her work? And then in 2007, there was this whole scandal in which she allegedly hit her maid in the head with a cell phone and she was charged with assault. Yikes. And in our number one spot today, we have Katherine Heigl. When people think of worst celebrities, Katherine is always up there on the list. Apparently, she's one of the most hated actors in Hollywood, and people refuse to cast her now. It all started with Grey's Anatomy. Apparently on set, she would complain about her wardrobe, and on some days, she would refuse to get off her trailer to film. And apparently, she would question the script every single day on set. Then in 2008, she said that she didn't want her Emmy nomination for her role in Grey's Anatomy because she felt that the writing on the show was bad. Imagine that, being like, nah, I actually don't want to be nominated for an Emmy. You know, the show is actually bad, like it sucks. Why would you do that? Coming in at 10, Will Smith, 35 million. Will Smith is an actor and rapper, and in April 2007, Newsweek called him the most powerful actor in Hollywood, which I think is an overstatement. I've never really been a Will Smith fan, but that's just my opinion. He has been nominated for five Golden Globe Awards and two Academy Awards, and has also taken home four Grammys. In the late 80s, he achieved success as a rapper under the name The Fresh Prince, and in 1990, popularity increased dramatically when he starred in the NBC series The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which ran for six seasons from 19. 1990 to 1996, before he transitioned into movies. Some of those movies include Hancock, Seven Pounds, Men in Black, Independence Day, and Bright. However, thanks to his work in 2019, which consisted of Aladdin, Gemini Man, and Spies in Disguise, he raked in a whopping $35 million. In at number 9, Paul Rudd, $41 million. Paul Rudd is an actor, comedian, screenwriter, and producer with films under his belt such as Clueless, Romeo and Juliet, Wet Hot American Summer, Anchorman, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked up and This Is 40. He was already a hugely accomplished and popular actor before he landed the role of Scott Lang slash Ant-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, appearing in Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Endgame. In addition to his film career, he has also appeared in a slew of television shows, including Friends, Parks and Recreation, and Living With Yourself. However, 2019 was his biggest year yet, with the actor appearing in Endgame, Between Two Ferns, The Movie, Living With Yourself, Avengers The Video Game, and even hosted SNL in the process. Thanks to all of this, he managed to rake in around $41 million. Coming in at 8, Chris Evans, 43.5 million. Chris Evans is an actor who first gained attention in 2005 as the Marvel Comics character Human Torch in Fantastic Four and its 2007 sequel. However, he shot to superstardom when he portrayed Steve Rogers slash Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, appearing in 11 movies, including four cameos. Outside of the MCU, he also appeared in works such as Not Another Teen Movie, Sunshine, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Gifted, and Knives Out. In 2014, he also made Made his directorial debut with the drama film Before We Go, in which he also starred. In 2019, he appeared in a slew of movies which helped him break in an obscene amount of money, including Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, Superpower Dogs, The Red Sea Diving Resort, and Knives Out, with the actor making a total of $43.5 million in the process. 
Coming in at 7, Adam Sandler, 57 million. Adam Sandler is an actor, comedian, screenwriter, film producer, and musician. After becoming a Saturday Night Live cast member, he went on to star in many Hollywood feature films that have grossed over 2 billion at the box office combined. His works include films such as Billy Madison, Happy Kilmore, The Wedding Singer, 51st Dates, Click, Grown Ups, and Just Go With It. However, 2019 was huge for Sandler, who appeared in Uncut Gems, Murder Mystery, and hosted Saturday Night Live. Uncut Gems was, of course, a critical success with it being Sandler's greatest performance to date, with some even pushing for an Oscar nomination. Sadly, he didn't get one though. Thanks to his hard work, he managed to rake in around $57 million in 2019. Coming in at 6, Bradley Cooper, 57 million. Bradley Cooper is an actor and filmmaker who has been nominated for a slew of awards, including 8 Academy Awards and a Tony Award, and has won a Grammy Award and a BAFTA in the process. It is no surprise that he has made it on this list, considering he's been working since the early 2000s, and is of course a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Over the course of his career, he has appeared in movies such as A Star Is Born, Limitless, The Hangover, The Place Beyond the Pines, and of course, Guardians of the Galaxy, as well as countless Marvel movies. In 2019, he appeared in just one movie, and that was Avengers Endgame, but still, he managed to rake in around $57 million. Coming in at 5, Jackie Chan, 58 million. Jackie Chan is a Hong Kong martial artist, actor, film director, producer, stuntman, and singer. He is known in the cinematic world for his acrobatic fighting style, comedic timing, use of improvised weapons, and innovative stunts, which he typically performs himself. He has been in the industry since the 1960s, appearing in over 150 films in the process, which is absolutely insane. Now, unbeknownst to me, the actor is still going strong and appearing in a handful of movies each and every year, sometimes even up to six per year. In 2019, he was still raking in the cash, appearing in The Night of Shadows, Between Yin and Yang, V2 Journey to China, and The Climbers, with the actor making around $58 million, making him one of the highest paid actors of the entire year. Coming in at number 4, Akshay Kumar, 65 million. Akshay Kumar is an Indian born Canadian actor, producer, martial artist, and television personality who works in Bollywood films. In a career spanning over 29 years, Kumar has appeared in over 100 movies and has won a slew of awards, including the National Film Award for Best Actor for his performance in Rustam and two Filmfare Awards in 2001 and 2005. It's hard to sum up the life of this actor who seemingly appears in around 5 to 6 movies each and every year, which is absolutely insane. Whether his biggest year came in 2019 when he starred in Kasari, Blank Mission Mango, House Full 4, and Good News, with the actor raking in $65 million for all of his hard work. Coming in at 3, Robert Downey Jr., 66 million. Robert Downey Jr. is an actor, producer, and singer with a career that has been characterized by critical and popular success in his youth, followed by a period of substance abuse and legal troubles before re emerging in middle age. His resurgence began back in 2008 when he landed the coveted role of Tony Stark in Iron Man. Man, instantly propelling him to superstardom. He then went on to star in movies such as Tropic Thunder, Sherlock Holmes, Due Date, and Chef. However, 2019 was one of his biggest years financially, even though he appeared in just one movie, Avengers Endgame. The star managed to rake in a whopping $66 million, the perks of being in the MCU, I guess. All you have to do is one film, <laughs> you can retire. Coming in at 2, Chris Hemsworth, 76.4 million. Chris Hemsworth is an Australian actor who rose to prominence playing Kim Hyde in the Australian TV series Home and Away before beginning a film career in Hollywood, starring in works such as Star Trek and A Perfect Getaway. However, the star blew up when he landed the coveted role of Thor in Thor and went on to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He has since appeared in works such as The Cabin in the Woods, Snow White and the Huntsman, Rush, Ghostbusters, and Black Hat. However, his biggest and best year was arguably 2019 when he appeared in Endgame, Men in Black, and Jay and Silent Bob the Reboot, in turn allowing the actor to earn a hefty paycheck of $76.4 million. And finally, coming in at number 1, Dwayne Johnson, $89.4 million. Dwayne Johnson, also known by his ring name The Rock, is an actor, producer, investor, and retired professional wrestler. However, since 2000, he's primarily been working as an actor, starring in a slew of movies such as The Mummy Returns, The Scorpion King, Be Cool, Race to Witch Mountain, and more. However, it's been in the last 10 years that the actor has really made a name for himself in Hollywood. In 2010, he joined the Fast and Furious crew, appearing in arguably the best Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five, before going on to star in works such as Pain and Gain, San Andreas, Moana, Jumanji, and even Shazam. The actor is currently breaking in the money with him exclusively starring in big box office hits, and in 2019, thanks to movies such as Hobbs and Shaw, Jumanji, The Next Level, and Fighting with My Family, the actor managed to rake in around $90 million, which is insane and kind of upsetting. So 
Starting off our list in the number 10 spot is The Weeknd. The singer turned 29 years old just a few months ago on February 16th, 2019. He is a Canadian singer, songwriter, and record producer who began his career in 2010 by putting out his music on YouTube. He's been in the industry for less than a decade and has gained an enormous following, and is now one of the most popular mainstream artists in the world. He's dated other celebrities like Selena Gomez and now Bella Hadid again, and has also had the opportunity to collaborate with some of the most famous musicians out there. He's got a pretty solid career. As of 2019, his net worth is around $57 million. When speaking about his success during an interview, he said, It's always been in me. I just had to be confident enough to let it out. Boy, was it a good thing that he did. And at number nine is Selena Gomez. Hey, look at that. It is his ex girlfriend taking the spot above him. The 26 year old superstar started her career on the Disney Channel, taking the lead in the hit TV series Wizards of Waverly Place. It was after the show that she started to gain a lot of recognition and then joined the band. Selena Gomez and the scene. Over the years, she starred in different movies and began her career as a solo artist, which definitely did her no harm. In 2017, Billboard reported that Selena had sold over 7 million albums and 22 million singles worldwide. She has taken some time off from music for self care, going through different rehabilitation programs, and also undergoing a big kidney transplant surgery. She is currently making a comeback though and is still one of the most popular artists in the world, taking the second place of most Instagram followers in the world at 154 million. As of the most recent report in 2009, her net worth is approximately 60 million dollars, so not too much more than her ex-boyfriend, but still more. Next up at number 8 is Harry Styles. You guys remember the boy band One Direction, right? Harry was the curly headed kid, who most would say was the lead of the group. He's an English singer who started his music career in the band, which released five studio albums and won a ton of awards. But they ended up splitting up, and he released his own debut single back in 2017 called Sign of the Times. He signed a record deal with Columbia Records as a solo artist and now has a net worth of $75 million. The now 25 year old was asked about his fame, and he says, I quote, You're never going to get used to walking into a room and have people screaming at you. His other former band members aren't far behind him on the list. Actually, the entire band could technically make up half this list as individuals, but I'm not going to do that to you guys, or do that to myself. Out of all the band members as of 2019, he is making the most money. Taking over the number 7 spot is Emma Watson. She is an English actress originally born in Paris and took the world by storm for her performance as Hermione in the Harry Potter series. She took on her role throughout the years 2001 all the way to 2011, earning her a whopping $60 million. Not a bad gig. After that, she continued to take on big roles in multiple movies, and one of them earned her $17 million. Can you guess which one? Yep, it was for her incredible performance as Belle in the live action Beauty and the Beast back in 2017. When she's not acting, she's the UN Women Goodwill ambassador and also makes money from modeling and endorsement deals with beauty brands like Chanel and Burberry. Oh, what a life. The actress is now 29 years old. She's no longer that frizzy head Hermione that we once knew her as. She is all grown up, and her bank account account has grown with her. As of this year, 2019, her net worth is approximately $80 million. In at number 6 is Ariana Grande. The pop star was not lying when she sang, I want it, I got it. The 26 year old bragged about all the money she has in her single called 7 Rings, with the lyrics saying, whoever said money can't solve your problems must not have had enough money to solve them. Well, way to rub it in Ari. The girl is bringing in some mad dough from her tours. According to Billboard, her tour in 2017, the Dangerous Woman Tour, brought in 71 million dollars, partly coming from the merch that she was selling at the time. She is currently on her Sweetener World Tour, so we can only imagine what kind of money that one will bring in. Not only does she have her music, but she's also made more than 150 million dollars over the span of two years for her fragrances. She's created some beauty products too, like teaming up with MAC for a lip gloss. The girl isn't messing around when it comes to earning that money. According to the celebrity net worth, Ariana's net worth is sitting around 100 million dollars. It's hard to calculate with her tour going on currently, but but she was earning anywhere between 80 to 100 million before it even started. So, guess we will have to wait for a future update. On a side note, she has surpassed Lena Gomez on Instagram and now has the most followers in the world at 161 million and counting as of today. I went and looked at her Instagram. So, these are facts. How we through our list at number 5 is Ed Sheeran. I totally underestimated what this guy was worth. No offense. The 28-year-old is an English singer and songwriter who started out by busking on the streets of London and performing performing at small gigs in his hometown. But now he's selling out arenas around the world, landing him within the top 100 richest singers in the world. As of 2019, his net worth is estimated to be at 110 million. I 
honestly didn't believe it at first that he was making more than Ariana Grande. But why he's worth so much isn't just because of his tours, he's also a songwriter, which many people forget. He writes songs for huge artists, and I bet you didn't even know they were written by him, because I didn't. Some examples that he wrote are Strip That Down for Liam Payne, Cold Water for Justin Bieber and Major Lazer, Tattoo for Hilary Duff, Your Song for Rita Ora, and the list just goes on and on and on. He is incredibly talented when it comes to his own music, but he spreads the love by sharing his talent with other people in the industry. Well, he's not really sharing, he's actually making some really good cash from it. Here we are at number four with Miley Cyrus, my queen. We first got to know Miley through her role as Hannah Montana on the Disney Channel. You know, the girl who lives a very unrealistic double life as a famous singer and an average schoolgirl who only throws on a different wig and somehow no one notices. Totally unrealistic, but I'm still totally obsessed with it and I still watch it. She started to break away from her role as Hannah and began releasing her own music away from the Disney Channel. She also started pursuing acting in films like Bolt, The Last Song, LOL, and So Undercover. Not including her albums as Hannah Montana, she has released seven studio albums which have all been a total success, no surprise there. Another big moment in her career was when she joined the judge panel on the reality singing show The Voice. The 26 year old has been the youngest person to land a judging role on that show. Pretty sweet. And more recently you could watch her taking on the lead role as Ashley O in an episode of Netflix hit TV series Black Mirror. The episode completely blew up as well as the soundtrack which is sung by her character. Miley's net worth was actually higher back in 2017, around 200 million, but as of this year 2019 her net worth is estimated at 160 million. Alright guys, we are at number 3 with Justin Bieber, the Biebs. He is a Canadian singer who achieved success at a very young age. As a kid he started singing on the streets of his hometown Stratford, Ontario and began posting cover videos of himself on YouTube. It was there that he was discovered by a talent manager, Scooter Braun. Justin flew out to Atlanta, Georgia to work with him and recorded some demo tapes. Only a week later he was discovered by Usher and quickly signed a record deal. He was the first artist to have 7 songs from a debut record chart on the Billboard Hot 100 list. His debut album was also certified triple platinum in the US. From there his career took off and he is one of the biggest pop stars in the world. He is living a more quiet and private life right now after moving to Canada and living with his new wife Haley Baldwin, but that does not mean he still isn't making that money. A 2019 update has his net worth as $265 million. Not bad for being 25 years old. In spot number 2 is Taylor Swift. At just 15 years old she was the youngest songwriter to ever sign with Sony. She now has 10 Grammys on her shelf and several successful tours under her belt. Not to mention an endless list of songs and albums that made it in the first place on the top charts. Now at 29 years old she has the title of one of the world's highest paid celebrities and also one of the richest female singers. According to Forbes, as of 2019 she has an estimated net worth of $360 million. But that does not include what she made from her 2019 reputation tour, which was the highest grossing tour in US history. It grossed $266.1 million and sold more than 2 million tickets. So she is actually worth over $360 million, they just can't estimate all of that yet. She is known for being incredibly generous though with her money and has donated millions of dollars into different charities and causes. Not only does her money come from her music, but like most celebrities it also comes from her merch and endorsements like other high profile brands. Take our number one spot is Kylie Jenner. She literally trumps everyone on this list probably combined. The 21 year old marked a milestone moment earlier this year when she earned the title of the youngest self made billionaire ever. Many people have always wondered what exactly she's famous for. She wasn't known for anything other than being the younger sister on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but then she started her own makeup line called Kylie Cosmetics. Her brand completely blew up and last year earned an estimated $360 million. Her growth percentage since then has increased significantly and she also added in a Kylie skin line. Forbes calculated that her company fortune is $1 billion and she owns 100% of it. Her empire consists of just 7 full time and 5 part time employees. The rest of the work is done by her. Her mother, who is also her manager, Kris Jenner, takes 10% for a management fee but everything else is in Kylie's pocket. And number 3, Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan hasn't seen his mom for 21 years. For years 
Tracy's mom and sister have been bad mouthing him to the media for refusing to help save his mother's home from foreclosure. Tracy became extremely saddened by the untrue stories and he began to grow tired of people questioning his commitment to his family. In an interview with ABC News, Tracy went on to state that the reasons they aren't talking are between them and that he hasn't seen his mother in 11 years outside of a random call here and there. And he's had little to no contact with his sister. Tracy was also helping his mother pay for the mortgage after she lost her job. However, after his mom and sister started talking to the media, Tracy would ultimately change his mind. And number two, we have Frances Bean Cobain. Now, Frances Bean Cobain didn't officially cut off her mother. However, she did have a restraining order in place. Since Frances was a minor at the time, the allegations were remain sealed. However, that didn't stop tabloids from running story about what truly happened. The Daily Mail would claim that Frances took exception to Courtney Love's alleged substance use and that they even cited some of Frances' testimony. Frances would say that her mom rarely ate and she would often fall asleep with lit cigarettes in her mouth and how she was afraid something bad would happen under the care of her mother. It was also then claimed that Courtney's actions led to the passing of two family pets and this would leave her daughter to file for the restraining order so that her grandmother and aunt could be temporary guardians so she could get away. And at number one today, we have Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler didn't even know Steven Tyler was her father until she was 11 years old. Until that point, she believed that Todd Rudgren was her biological father. While Todd always knew there was a chance he wasn't Liv's father, he signed the birth certificate and gave her his last name and stepped in to raise her as his own. When Liv met Steven when she was eight years old at one of Todd's concerts, she fell madly in love with him and would even go on to buy posters and talk to them. While Todd knew her father's true identity, he decided to keep it a secret due to Steven's reported substance use. In 2009, Liv would say that in the past few years, we haven't been very close. He's also been going through some things on his own and he hasn't been around that much for us. So that's been hard, but I probably shouldn't be talking about this. I wish he was around more to know Milo more, but he has to go through what he goes through. Number 10, Jim Carrey. Jim is considered to be one of the funniest men in human history. In 1995 alone, he had three blockbuster comedies make it big at the box office, with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Dumb and Dumber, and The Mask. Now, as the years have gone by, his films were a roller coaster of genres. He slowly started moving into the realm of real with films like Yes Man and the number 23, but that movie was really when people started to wonder if things were okay with Jim. And according to Jim himself, he was more than fine, he was learning. Jim has become a very introspective person as time has gone on, becoming more and more spiritual and sure of himself. He slowed down in the acting world and started painting, creating beautiful and disturbing pieces in his studio in New York, but the world of Hollywood was not letting him go so easy. Jim starred as Dr. Robotnik, aka Eggman, in the live action Sonic movie movie that gave Jim the modern day boost he needed to pop back into the mainstream. However, while being interviewed on the red carpet for Sonic 2, Jim explained that there were so many things over the years that he has been forced to ignore because of how busy he's been, joking that there was 25 years of mystery science theater to catch up on. He goes on to say that his paintings will soon be available as non-fungible tokens or NFTs, which is a word I did not think would ever come out of Jim Carrey's mouth. In recent interviews, Jim has been pretty adamant about quitting the acting world very soon, so it's looking more and more like Sonic 2 may be his last film role. Number 9, Billie Eilish. Billie is one of the best musicians around right now. You show anyone a picture of her or play even one second of Bad Guy, instant answer is Billie Eilish. While Billie has been making music for a long time, she hasn't always enjoyed the fame that comes with it. In 2020, she revealed that the pressure started really kicking in around 2016, having to deal with many things that would make most adults crumble. She was still a teen at the time, and having a massive crowd gathering around you every time you step outside is not fun. In an interview with the LA Times, she explained that she hated going outside, being recognized by anyone was panic inducing. She just wanted to do normal teenage things without being spotted by paparazzi. She then explained that being locked in her home in 2020 really helped her reflect on the situation and grow as a person. It's understandable that that pressure that young made her uncomfortable, like look how many child actors quit acting for the exact same reasons. That that and a lot of DUIs. Number eight, Brad Pitt. In 2019, Brad sat down with Entertainment Tonight Canada 
to discuss the things that drive him to take the roles that he chooses. Pitt has been around since the mid 90s and has gone nowhere but up, up and away. While he's not much of a franchise man, Pitt has been a busy bee starring in several blockbuster hits like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and so many more. Despite being a megastar, Brad has actually struggled with his fame over the years. He actually got very introspective in the interview, explaining that the struggle wasn't exactly with the glitz and glamour, but rather the distance that was growing between himself and everybody else. He says that as he got older, the people he surrounded himself with became more and more important to him. He goes on to say that his time working on set meant that he would not be able to enjoy the things that he wished to use his money for, like traveling the world. Even though he has filmed in some pretty luxurious locations, actors rarely get enough time to actually enjoy the scenery. It seems that Brad's been able to get over his gripes, and he now leaves time for himself between shoots to get a little groovy. Number seven, Daniel Radcliffe. Dan the man with the plan can play Peter Pan. Nailed it. Mr. Radcliffe, of course, rose to flame when he was just 12 years old, portraying the iconic magical misfit Harry Potter in the film series based on the novels by J.K. Rowling. Dan is one of the few child actors who continue to work following the end of their franchise, being in every genre imaginable, from dramatic art pieces like Swiss Army Man to the action thriller Guns Akimbo to the horror flick Woman in Black. Dan proved that he was more than a scar and some glasses. Of course, starting to be such a big name at such a young age, had a massive effect on Dan. Growing up in one of the most profitable franchises of all time, he would make regular appearances at conventions and in studios. Apparently, he faced a lot of hate from some fans who would actually boo him when he would walk on stage, something he claims to have been long-lasting and anxiety fuel. Thankfully, the harsh words never stopped him from doing what he loved, appearing in eight Harry Potter movies before morphing into the Hollywood A-lister that he is today. Number six, Kylie Jenner. Kylie is one of the younger members of the Kardashian clan. Being rich and famous at such a young age has dramatically impacted her day to day. In an interview from 2015, Jenner said that she woke up every morning with the worst anxiety, claiming to launch out of bed around seven or eight because she is nervous that there will be a negative article waiting for her to deal with. The fear is warranted as over the years, her name has been on the front page of media outlets a few times for various scandals and rumors. Unfortunately, most of the things that have been revealed have been proven to be true, like the mistreatment of employees at her cosmetic factory or the fact that she lied to Forbes magazine about how rich she was, so kind of hard to feel bad for Kylie on this one. Number five, Megan Fox. One of two Transformers alumni that will pop up on this list, Megan Fox is one of the few people that hated acting so much that they did eventually retire. Megan was, of course, the hottest woman in Hollywood in the mid-2000s, but following her departure from the Transformers franchise, things started to take a turn. She was being casted in less and less, seemingly due to her bashing Hollywood any chance that she had. The reason she was let go from Transformers was because she referred to Michael Bay as a former leader of Germany whose name rhymes with Schmittler. Between 2012 and 2023, Megan only starred in one franchise, and that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the live action series. So bad it was remade into an animated feature this year that made millions. Megan actually called out Hollywood a lot in the past, claiming the process behind developing a film and casting a project was disgusting. She felt like an object many times in her career, and rightfully so. Every shot of Megan during the day in Transformers looks like an Axe Body Spray commercial. While she is adamant that she absolutely hates being famous, she seems to be appearing in movies again, so I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe Hollywood likes it when their actor teases them. You know, it gives them a little tingle downstairs, a little kinky. Number four, George Clooney. George was a massive star in Hollywood, being deemed a Hollywood heartthrob thanks to his work on the hit TV series ER. Over the years, Clooney's career has been filled with many hits like Ocean's Eleven, as well as a brief stint as Batman in 1997 that I will never let him live down. In recent years, things have slowed down drastically for the heartthrob, being casted in less and less roles the closer we got to 2023. His last two roles were in The Flash and Ticket to Paradise with Julia Roberts, both of which received terrible box office returns. This may have something to do with George believing that Hollywood is an extremely toxic place. In an interview with IndieWire, Clooney said that fame can be very dangerous. While he has maintained a rather humble approach to life, that wasn't always the case. George recounted how early in his career he enjoyed the sneaky nature of the press. He liked the fame being delivered to him on a daily basis, and it eventually messed with his mental health. Over the years, he's tried to separate himself from his projects once they wrapped up. These days, he spends a lot of time away from the spotlight, and instead being a full-time human, just trying to exist. Number three, 
Shia LaBeouf. Shia is an interesting man. For a long time, he was Hollywood's go-to funny guy to throw into movies and TV shows, but since 2015, he's existed in this weird space between superstar and super jerk. Over the years, many situations involving Shia, including everything from shoving a dude to mistreating his ex, have been brought to light. This was part of the reason that he slowly started being casted in less and less projects, with his last big franchise being the third Transformers movie. Since then, he's had a slew of indie and passion projects, but according to Shia himself, the entire idea of Hollywood is, quote, soul crushing. During a Q&A at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2015, he claimed that there was little to no inclusivity in the industry, that he was a product for the studio to sell. He went off into a bit of a tangent that I won't quote fully because it will cause headaches. But to summarize in English that we can understand, Shia hated being famous for being someone's puppet and not for his own creative material. As we know, Shia never actually retired from acting, but following this revelation, he has appeared in far more independent projects, which means he's given almost complete creative control as showcased in the 2019 award-winning film Honey Boy, loosely based on his own life. Number two, Robert Pattinson. Robert rose to fame thanks to playing the sparkly man with the plan Edward Cullen in the live-action Twilight series. While many are under the impression that being a part of such an iconic role would be a game-changer for most, for Robert, it was more of a waking nightmare. Sitting down for an interview in 2015, Rob gets real about the insanity that followed the release of Twilight. As one would expect, he was bombarded by fans in the streets constantly, and people were literally sitting outside of his house waiting for him to emerge, driving him crazy. He didn't go into supermarkets in person for six years, but these days he can actually exist in public since the Twilight stuff's kind of died down. He was honest in the interview and expressed that he is one of the most uncomfortable people in his normal life, and that it took him a very, very long time to reach the level of comfort that he has now. All that fame of being an actor has little impact on him these days, as he's become a much more serious actor with films like The Batman and Tenant under his belt. Thankfully, the whole Twilight thing is over and done, but there is a prequel to The Hunger Games on its way in a couple months, so a uh, Twilight prequel? Anyone? Huh? You? Yes. Number one, Gigi Hadid. The Hadid modeling empire is strong, with Gigi being one of two Hadids roaming the runways of Paris. Despite coming from a wealthy family and living one of the most lavish lifestyles around, Gigi actually hates everything about it. According to herself, being busy for such long periods of time means that she isn't able to make time for the people who care about her in her life. She has lost a lot of friends over the years simply by being unavailable and everyone drifting apart. Now, this is a fair reason to hate your fame, but at the same time, if your friends can't respect that you're across the world modeling Chanel and Louis Vuitton, they don't deserve to be your friends. Besides, I've seen Gigi's Coca-Cola ad and she said she loves doing game night with her friends all the time. You gonna tell me that, that was a lie? Number 10, Macaulay Culkin. Having been in the acting industry since the age of four, Culkin was only nine when he starred in the first Home Alone movie and became a household name shortly afterwards. He was eventually named by VH1 in, 20, in 2005 as the second greatest child actor of all time. Culkin was also nominated for a Golden Globe for his appearance in the iconic Christmas film. And he also won that year's Young Artist Award for Best Young Actor in a Film Role. Like this dude, it was on an upward spiral. Culkin decided to leave the acting industry at the age of 14 in 19. Shortly after, he appeared as the lead in Donald Petrie's comedy film, Richie Rich. He took this step essentially because he felt tired of the industry and his parents' control over him. The Culkins do not have a great relationship with their father, Kit, who has eight children, two of whom are no longer with us. Macaulay, for instance, has spoken about how he was very physical towards them growing up. In a 2019 profile with Esquire, Macaulay portrayed his father as a controlling bully who pushed his sons into the acting business because he just couldn't achieve success for himself. He told many people in his life and later in interviews that acting had become a chore instead of something that he enjoyed doing. He wanted a normal childhood, so he quit and made it happen. Thankfully, he has since returned to the acting world, most notably in season 10 of the FX series American Horror Story, and he's married to former Disney star Brenda Sung. So things seem to work out in the end there. Number 9, Amanda Bynes. Amanda got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series, All That. Eventually, the producers decided to offer Amanda her own show. Her success only grew from there, and the Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's 
Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man and Easy A. But Amanda took a hiatus in 2013 following a very public mental breakdown. According to Amanda, she had become addicted to the devil's lettuce at a young age, and while it wasn't an addiction at first, with more roles came more pressure and a need to find a new way to cope. This eventually led her to more drastic substances. In 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting everybody that she could think of. She even called the former President Barack Obama's wife ugly, clearly referencing a character from The Amanda Show, but it's still pretty harsh. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents and was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022 when she stood in front of a judge healthier and better than ever. Number 8. Kei Hoi Kwan Kei Hoi Kwan is one of two goonies on this list, playing the character Data in the 1985 classic. He was also short round in the Indiana Jones movies, delivering some iconic one liners and cementing himself as a legend in the world of child acting. Around the end of 1991, he decided to take a break from the acting world as the fame and fortune was slowly becoming too stressful. He took a break from acting for over 20 years before making a triumphant return to the silver screen in 2022's Everything Everywhere All at Once as Waymond, the lovable universe jumping husband. In fact, he was so good in that role he received the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, delivering a tearful speech that I really can't talk about because I'm going to try to. Number 7. Lil Tay Lil Tay is a rapper and a According to the photos that pop up when you Google her, it looks like she has a phone made from $100 bills. I'm not sure what that's about. Recently, she popped up in the news after someone shared the information that herself and her brother had passed away. This took the internet by storm and her fans were devastated. However, it turns out that she is still very much alive and in a statement given to TMZ from Tay's family, she made it perfectly clear that she is safe and still kicking and she said the last 24 hours had been particularly rough. Apparently, her Instagram account was hacked by some third party and they used it to spread misinformation and just straight up rumors. But much like me, these guys didn't know how to spell stuff, so the first clue was that her name was literally misprinted several times. What's still unclear is why it took Tay 24 hours to get word out that she was alive, especially because she says she was aware that her account was hacked and was getting phone calls about her passing. She got famous as being one of the world's youngest flexors, literally making money by pretending to have money on the internet. But she stopped doing that in 2018 after receiving so much online hate. And that's why many people were confused why her account had posted this announcement when it had been so inactive for so long. Number 6. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay is a jack of all trades. She acts, she sings, she dances, she writes, and she's even the queen of her own business empire. Now, Despite all of this though, this former Disney star and Hollywood bad girl has a net worth of like $500,000. Well, that is apparently because she loves to take nice long vacations, like all of the time. Lohan has been forced to declare bankruptcy a few times, and as we know, she fell out of the mainstream and started a very public battle with substance control, basically quitting the acting world forever because she just got too into the partying lifestyle. This left Lindsay in the 600 figure range, making her poor by Hollywood standards. Eventually, this young child actor entered rehab and kicked their bad habits right into oncoming traffic. It wasn't until she posed for Playboy and opened up about her life on Oprah Winfrey's talk show that her finances began to stabilize, she started getting more roles again, so here's hoping that we get that freaky Friday a sequel we've all been waiting for. Number 5. Jeff Cohen Jeff's name may not be familiar to you, but his most iconic and only acting role certainly is. Jeff played Chunk in the much loved classic adventure flick The Goonies. Chunk was one of the many young actors in search of the treasure of one-eyed Willie so they could save their small seaside neighborhood from being bulldozed to the ground. And This movie has aged like a fine wine, it just gets better and better the older you get. Jeff stole the show and truly stood out among the ensemble who, like who could forget his notorious and interrogation scene. That dude almost got his hand blended. Following the success of the movie, many were under the impression that he was going to have a long, successful career. While his co-stars went to star in franchises like Lord of the Rings and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Jeff decided to go the opposite direction and he quit acting entirely. Unfortunately, he was being pegged as a chubby actor, so that's exactly what people were trying to cast him in. And rather than give him room to grow and breathe, studios were just trying to typecast him as this big nerdy dude in every single project. He found it difficult to secure work, and it was unfortunately puberty that secured his fate. He was going from chunk to hunk, according to an interview with the Daily Mail, and eventually he realized that it just made sense to give up for now and try something else. So that is exactly what he did. He went to school, focused on his mental health, and he got a degree in law. And now he works out of a law firm that he co-founded with his business partner, Cohen 
Gardner. So good for you, Jeff. Number four, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Mary Kate and Ashley were once the stars of their own show back in the day, and they made several movies together like Double Double, Toil and Trouble, and New York Minute. Now, around 2005, these two suddenly stopped making movies or TV appearances out of the blue. It turns out that they had been fed up with the movie business. Not just that, but the amount of toxic men in the field really came to light. Apparently, they were being harassed or mistreated all the time at a very young age. It's no wonder that they hated most of their time on set. Since stepping away from the movie industry, the twins launched a fashion brand called The Row, a company that has won several awards, even taking home the highest honor of the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Dude, that sounds like a fashion Illuminati to me. Probably some pretty comfy robes, though. Number three, Barrett Oliver. The never ending story was a staple in many childhoods. Filled with magic and mystery, this film was dropped in our lives in 1984 and featured some of the most beautiful practical effects ever put to screen, and some really weird puppets. The main character of the story is Bastion, a young man who finds a book about the world of Fantasia. Now, we only see Barrett as the narrator a few times over the course of the film, but in the final act, he is whisked into the world of Fantasia. Barrett starred in a handful of projects in the 1980s, but following 1985's Cocoon, Barrett decided to stop acting. The success of the film Never Ending Story was causing him trouble at school. Kids would be making fun of him, and they actually called him Fur Boy. It was not fun. So he decided to quit acting and focused on another career. Oliver now works as a photographer and printer, specifically antique photos. So if you see a man with a long black beard and dreadlocks asking you for a photo on the boardwalk, it might be the kid from the never ending story. Number two, Peter Ostrom. From the moment he walked into the room, talent agents immediately knew that Peter was the perfect pick to play Charlie Buckets after seeing him partake in theater productions in Ohio. The young talent and his co-stars began filming in Munich in the summer of 1970 as he was approaching the seventh grade. The film was released in June 1971 and is still considered to be a classic in the world of cinema. It's personally been giving me joy and scaring the life out of me since I was a young lad. Following the success of the film, you'd think Peter would have continued to act, but instead he decided to step down and focus on his true passion, being a veterinarian. That's right, if you live in New York, there is a very good chance that Charlie frickin' Buckets had your cat spayed or neutered. In recent years, he has told interviewers and fans that the movie business just wasn't for him. Number one, Jake Lloyd. Jake was the little boy that became a Sith Lord, playing young Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode One. While his character eventually becomes Darth Vader, Lloyd's personal life would turn out to be mm, just as rough. Following the release of the film, Jake was actually picked on relentlessly by both his peers and Star Wars fans. He grew up with people hating him in public settings and cursing his name whenever Episode One was even mentioned. Seriously, Star Wars fans are just, just plain mean, man. Jake eventually decided to quit acting for good and save himself from any more public backlash. All that hate seemed to stick with Jake over the years though, as he had become more and more violent in the public eye, and he was becoming well known for being short-tempered. In 2015, police chased the 26-year-old Lloyd for 25 miles before he crashed off the side of a road on Interstate 95 in South Carolina. He wasn't intoxicated at the time, but after being arrested and sent for a psychiatric evaluation, it was concluded that the young actor had just been suffering from schizophrenia and he was held for treatment. Thankfully, currently Jake is in a much better place mentally speaking, but his career will unfortunately never recover. Number 10, Jason Earls. Bang, flat it, Jackson! That, that's right, fans of the show surely recognize Mr. Jason Earls as Jackson Rod Stort, aka Miley's big brother. Fun fact, Jason was almost 30 years old when he started playing the character who's in his mid-teens, so hey, good for Jason for nabbing that one. He was a lovable goofball who always had something going on. This man was literally the physical embodiment of ADHD. I love him. Following his time on the show, he nabbed the role of Sensei Rudy Gillespie on the hit Disney XD series, Kicking It, which was genuinely one of my favorite sitcoms as a kid. The show centered around Rudy running the Bobby Wasabi Dojo, which was a failing karate studio and a strip mall. The show ran for four seasons before suddenly being canceled in 2015. Jason was left wondering where his next check may come from and what his next job was going to be. Following kicking it, Jason ended up taking an unplanned hiatus from the acting world. A hiatus that finally ended in 2022 when he returned to the acting world in the Disney Plus show High School Musical The Musical The Series. Really Disney? You didn't want to workshop that one a little bit? Apparently 
apparently though he's been involved with that show behind the scenes since it first aired as a mentor to the young actors. Jason is considered a Disney darling and he currently teaches the next generation how to be just as energetic as he was. Number 9, Shanika Knowles. I know what you're thinking and no, despite sharing the same last name as Beyonce and Solange, Shanika is not related to the Knowles family. She just happens to share the same last name. That would be cool if everyone with the same last name was related though. There'd be so many Smiths. Shanika played Amber Addison, one half of the duo that would make up Miley's tormentors. Amber and Ashley made Miley's life a living hell on the show, with Amber being played as a jealous type. She thinks she's a great singer, she's the editor of the school yearbook, and she was the first in her class to get a driver's license. Oh, isn't that special? After the show was cancelled, it seems that Shanika probably should have told people that she was related to Beyonce. Unfortunately, her acting career never got bigger than her time on the show. During her time on the show, she was in the film Jump In alongside Corbin Blue, but even that was like a much smaller capacity. She was never able to find her place in Hollywood, and she now sits in that pile of actors that never moved on from the House of Mouse. Say hi to Mitchell Musso for us. Number 8. Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend, Oliver Oaken, on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the scene. He was being casted to voice people like Jeremy and Phineas and Ferb, and played one of the titular kings in Pair of Kings. And he was in something called Hatching Pete. I'm pretty sure I saw it, but I'm, I like repressed that memory. It was really weird. He seemed to be following the same track as Demi Lovato, as the next big thing to come from Disney. People think that about Demi Lovato, right? That's, that's something that people agree on? Unfortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed by police, and the report said that the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of no-no juice just dropped kicked them in the nostrils. He blew a BLA of 0.8, which for those of you who don't know, means that he was hammied butt. He was arrested, forced to participate in a no-no juice educational program, and charged with driving under the influence. Needless to say, that didn't really go with Disney's vibe. So he was recasted on Pair of Kings, his prank show got cancelled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney and everywhere else entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that just nosedived into a toilet. So if you'd like to find Mitchell these days, you can download one of his old songs, and you'll be the first one to do it in a while, so I'm sure he'll find you. Number 7, Moises Arias. Another former Hannah Montana star, Moises is probably best known as the young entrepreneur and biggest troublemaker on the beach, Rico. His character the character on the show was always getting sucked into the family's problems, and he delivered some iconic moments that are a big part of the reason that this show still holds up. There's a good chance that you've seen him in recent Hollywood flicks, but you might not realize who he was. Since leaving the Disney world behind, Arias has been a part of several indie films that received stellar reviews like the coming of age story Kings of Summer when he played Biagio, but most recently he starred alongside SNL alumni Davidson in a movie based on the comedian's early life called King of Staten Island, sprouting a goatee and he's got tattoos all over him, he's unrecognizable. It must be in his contract that he exclusively works in films with King in the title though, it's just a little coincidental. Number 6, Sterling Knight. Sterling only made a handful of appearances on the show, but certainly made his mark as one of Hannah Montana's love interests that doesn't exactly work out. Hannah Montana was actually just one of a few shows that Sterling ended up being a part of, being casted in stuff like Sunny with a Chance, So Random, and Starstruck. His most lucrative role though was playing Zac Efron's son in the film Seventeen again. That's right, I bet you forgot about that one. Weird movie, guys. Since his days at Disney, he has unfortunately fallen into the category of brokest cast member. He's made small cameo appearances in films and TV over the years, but he hasn't had a significant acting gig since 2015. Nowadays, he's still trying to work, but when he's not working, he enjoys traveling across the globe. Not sure that's a great way to save money, but eh, I'm terrible with my finances, so who am I to judge? Number 5, Cody Lindley. Cody was probably the most memorable love interest to ever appear on the sitcom. Sorry, Jesse McCartney, not today. Cody played Miley's on and off again love interest Jake Ryan, returning over and over again until the show's final season. If you were a fan of Jake, then I have good news. If you hated Jake, I have bad news. It actually took a few years for him to stop acting following his time on Hannah Montana. He was able to snag a role in the Sharknado franchise, specifically 4 and 5. There are 7 of those movies. 
Whoever keeps doing that, please stop. Outside of his role on Sharknado, he's unfortunately found it difficult to find work. Apparently being a Disney kid can severely hurt your career, cause during his time on the show, he was in a ton of projects, either produced or developed by Disney, but the moment that the show was over, it was like he got Do Not Hire just stamped on his forehead. Which is a shame, cause I saw some of the clips from Sharknado and it's surprisingly entertaining. Number four. Emily Osmond. Many fans of the show may believe Emily Osmond got her start on the Disney sitcom, but she was actually a well-established actor well before that, starring as Gertie Giggles in the Spy Kids franchise. Remember those movies? I swear the pitch for that was just like, hey kid in Jackpack goes wee! She fell more into the mainstream though, thanks to her role as Hannah Montana's best friend in the world, Lily Truscott. The reason Emily is so far down on this list is because she is one of the few Hannah Montana stars who's still working to this day. That's right. I could not find 10 broke people to use for this list from the show because everyone was just so good at their jobs that they ended up doing stuff afterwards. Emily starred in sitcom after sitcom, even being the lead of her own between 2014 and 2018 called Young and Hungry. Emily currently spends her time, that's right, still on camera, and most recently she played a character named Chelsea on the sitcom Pretty Smart. While she may still only be in the world of TV, she seems to have found a nice home among the lights and cameras. Heck, she probably stays there where she films. I don't know. That bed on Young and Hungry did look pretty comfy. Free rent. Number three, Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus. What a great name. It's three first names all in one, so you know that this guy is a country singer. Billy Ray is not only the fictional father of Hannah Montana, but he's actually her real life papa too. Billy Ray, and I do have to say that, not Billy. Billy Ray was a welcome addition to the cast of characters that made up Hannah's life. Being a silly but grounded father figure who actually had a lot of wisdom to share with the young fans. Following the show's cancellation, Billy made the decision to focus on his music career instead of acting. Like he appeared in a few movies here and there, but it was really his voice that got him back into the mainstream. Thanks to his vocal track on the song Old Town Road, as well as his appearance in the music video, you can find any and all songs from this man on Spotify, and good lord I recommend you do so and blast it as loud as you can. Good old Billy Ray. Number two, Dolly Parton. She tumbled out of bed and stumbled in the kitchen when she played the role of Hannah Montana's Aunt Dolly on the sitcom. First of all, this woman is in no way broke. She is a sweetheart with a theme park that is one of my personal favorites. It's jammed against the side of a mountain and it's in Tennessee, so nice. She made this list because she was on the show, she's worth mentioning, and to be honest, I ran out of unsuccessful people from the show to use. Everyone did really well in the world of acting. Now, we gotta mention Miss Parton because A, iconic character on the show, and B, cause I wanna! Her role as Miley's aunt on the show was incredibly well done. Despite Dolly basically playing herself, her character was often there to help Miley in times of struggle. And she delivered a lot of words of wisdoms that not only helped her character, but that spread a really positive message to the audience as well. In the past few years, Dolly has been very active in the music world and has even ventured into the world of writing, releasing her first book called Run Rose Run, that she co-wrote with James Patterson. She also released an album to go along with that book, just as a little bonus. If you're lucky enough to spot her, she does apparently spend some of her personal time at that theme park, but she's not hidden on a ride like Johnny Depp, who I swear is there all the time. That thing looks way too real. And at number one, Miley Cyrus. Taking the top spot on this list is Miley Cyrus because she is still the most famous cast member to ever come out of this sitcom. Starring, of course, as the titular Hannah Montana, Miley doubled as an actor and a musician. I can still hear the climb ringing in my skull anytime I walk up a hill. Her epic voice and talents as an actor nabbed her a sitcom that lasted over five years. But when the show was done, fans wanted to know where Miley was going next. Well, that question was answered in 2013 when she decided to show the world that she was no longer some goody two-shoes Disney girl. She was now a woman with her own free will, and she used that free will to swing on a wrecking ball in her birthday suit. And she started one of the most popular dance moves of the 21st century. And I, I still can't do it. Like, is it in the hips? What is... I... Following the end of the series, she focused on her music career and stuck to it for quite some time. I'm not saying that she doesn't sing anymore, in fact, she pumps out fresh tracks all the time. When it comes to the acting world, she's actually played herself in films and TV more often than anything. Sure, she's had some voiceover roles in movies like Bolt or Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, that happened. But in films like The Night Before, Pop Star Never Stopping, she's just like a fictionalized, wilder version of herself. Who knows what she may pop in next? Got any theories? Let us know in the comments below. 
Those are the Hannah Montana stars that lost their fame overnight. If you were upset that most of these people turned out okay, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. I was seven when this thing came out. It's not like I could have influenced the decision process. I'm not the boss, baby. All right, number 10, Drake Bell, uh, Drake and Josh, a sitcom that gifted us with some incredible one-liners and caused anyone named Megan to have their lives changed forever. Drake Bell and Josh Peck starred as the titular Drake and Josh for four seasons before being canceled in 2008. Following the cancellation, the three main cast members, they all went on to have steady work for a short while. Miranda Cosgrove, who played Megan, had some success in voiceover and was given her own series, iCarly, before dropping out of the actor world in 2015. Josh Peck starred in a few movies and TV shows here and there, but has only recently made a return to mainstream, appearing in the new Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. Drake has probably had the worst go of the crew when the show was canceled. His roles were limited to straight to video flicks and voiceovers starring as Spider-Man in the animated Ultimate Spider-Man series. The worst performance of all though was when Nickelodeon thought it would be a great idea to make a live action fairly odd parents movie, I actually remember this, starring Drake as Timmy Turner. Needless to say, his status as a celebrity was gone at that point, but the nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed he'd been being a young fan for years. So if you see him in an orange jumpsuit cleaning graffiti off the wall, you'll know why. All right, Jamie Lynn Spears at her number nine spot. Jamie starred as the title character Zoe in the hit series Zoe 101 alongside fellow entry on this list, Matthew Underwood. Her time on the show was well received and made many fans excited about what she may film next. When the show was eventually canceled in 2008, Jamie was at the center of a massive media rumor. The theory was that Zoe 101 was abruptly canceled due to Jamie becoming pregnant with her daughter. The reality was that never happened. Jamie did get pregnant, but it was six months after filming had wrapped on the series, so the show was cancelled by the executives at Nickelodeon. For some reason, they felt the show was done and needed to be replaced by something new and more fun. And Jamie actually did have plans to continue her career on the silver screen, but like we said, six months into looking for work, a new job opportunity opened up and it would be the most challenging of all, the role of a mother. She decided to move back to Mississippi and gave up her career in film to raise her kid and be a star to, you know, the household. Now it's not all missed opportunities, however, as Jamie is still remembered fondly as a musician, releasing several songs before 2010, and has recently been popping up at several country and rock festivals to lend her voice to the crowd, and many fans will be happy to know that not only there will be a Zoe 101 flick released on Paramount Plus this fall, but it stars the entire original cast, and a trailer is already out for us to enjoy. Perfect. All right, number eight, Jake Paul. Jake Paul looted them all. News headline or Dr. Seuss title, I don't know, that's right. The famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short-lived sitcom called Bizarre Bark. And in 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens. And Jake's reaction had people scrambling for their phones and cameras, but video footage was released by Paul himself showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight. And while Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming he had nothing to do with the riots and they were exclusively kind of observers of the event. But the video did show Jake intervening with looters in the mall. And of course, groups were recognizing him almost immediately. And thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake, who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas, bro. Okay. Thank you. However, that was just the situation Disney needed to kind of finally fire the guy according to Disney and his reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time and there had been plans in place to simply address the issue and learn but the following events in Scottsdale, well, kind of had no choice to cut ties with the performer immediately. He was charged with criminal trespassing and his defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote public service. If I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from Hot Topic, is that also a public service? 
I don't know. All right, number seven, Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend, Oliver Oaken, on the hit Disney yeah. sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene. He was cast to voice Jeremy and Phineas and Ferb, playing one of the ritual kings and pair of kings, and something called Hatching Pete, which I vaguely remember watching, but this one I'm pretty sure I've kind of repressed. Now, he seems to be on track to follow Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney, and people think that about Demi Lovato, right? Fortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed to kind of do so by police and pull over. The report said the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of something just drop kicked them in the nostrils and he blew a BAL of 0.8, which for those who don't know means he was kind of gone. He was also forced to participate in a adult juice educational program and charged with driving under the influence. Kind of standard, but needless to say, it doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. So he was recast on Pair of Kings, his prank show, it was canceled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that also just kind of nosedived into the toilet. Now, if you'd like to find Mitchell these days, just go download one of his old songs. You'll be the first to do in a while, and I'm sure he'll find you. All right, at number six, we have Orlando Brown. That's So Raven, another series considered to be a part of the golden years, also known as the early 2000s of Disney, starred Raven Simone as the titular character who had the ability to briefly see the future via unprompted visions. I swear every time I explain a plot to an old Disney show, I question who was on what when they were pitched. The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend Chelsea and Eddie, played by Annalise Vanderpaul, and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but dramatic ability as well. Now, after Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career, it took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being cast as a small side character or secondary characters with minimal screen time, so he never really got a lead after the show. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show and opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look, drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Now, unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney, and he was arrested for a misdemeanor as well after an altercation with his brother. All right, number five, Brenda Song, London Tipton. She was the daughter of the man behind the chains of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right as she was about to start college. Little did she know the character would consume her life for the next six years. She appeared as London on both Zack and Cody and its reboot sequel, The Sweet Life on Deck, for a total of six seasons following the show's cancellation in 2011. Brenda starred in a few smaller roles and films like The Social Network, as well as TV shows in like Scandal, uh, New Girl, and Superstore. Now, Brenda, she's still active in the acting community, just in smaller, just in a smaller capacity, as she's traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star. Macaulay Culkin. Now, Richie Rich and London Tipton have a child together, and that's not a show, or not even a reality show. Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream as well. However, she has recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. And here's hoping that inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie, maybe? If you don't know Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior, you, you need to look into that. <laughs> All right, number four, Cal Mitchell. Welcome to Good Burger, home of Good Burger. Can I take your order? The sentence that always blasts into my skull when I talk about Cal Mitchell. Cal was another young buck to be cast on the hit show, All That, with Amanda Bynes and future best friend Kenan Thompson. Much like Amanda, Cal was asked to participate in a spinoff of All That, only this time a straight up sitcom rather than more of a sketch show. And the show, Kenan and Cal, starring Cal and Kenan Thompson, is one of my favorite that Disney Channel produced. And these two had incredible chemistry and so good that Nickelodeon had a movie centered around them, Good Burger, that has actually aged pretty well. And his character never really took off after that, with him only appearing in that sitcom world and in a minimal capacity then. But his loss of fame was kind of self-inflicted as his career on screen slowed down. His family life has been nothing but up. He decided to stay at home and focused on building a relationship with his wife and rapper Asia Lee. And they are currently expecting a second child sometime this year. We're 
hoping that when the kids are a little older, Kel can get some time off and maybe make a return to the acting world. Now, there was a rumor of a Good Burger 2 being in the works, so let's start that now. Hashtag Good Burger 2, make it a trend. <laughs> All right, number three, Josh Peck. Josh made up the second half of the series Drake and Josh alongside musician and bad boy Drake Bell. Josh got his start on the Amanda Bynes show alongside Amanda Bynes, participating in several classic sketches before eventually moving on to his own sitcom that is still considered to be one of the best Nickelodeon shows ever produced. Josh's time on the show, it was wonderful. He delivered a zany, big hearted kind of brother vibe that went really well with Drake's rock and roll, I need love on the inside. Um, kind of character and following the cancellation of the show, Josh went on to star in several silver screen showings like the underrated comedy Drill Bit Taylor starring Owen Wilson and the reboot of Red Dawn from 2012 alongside Chris Hemsworth. His career dipped in quality following that performance though. Josh was starting to seem like another Nickelodeon kid who was growing up to be rambunctious and wild instead of taking his job seriously. He lended his voice though to several characters over the years, including various roles in the Ice Age films, but has mainly stuck to small TV roles or independent flicks and he did maintain a following. However, as of a few years ago, he started posting TikToks as well. Those received millions of views. And recently Josh has popped up on the cast list of Christopher Nolan's upcoming historical drama Oppenheimer. Perhaps this will mark his return to the acting world if it's in a movie like that. Now, he may be on the road to Oscar territory. All right, number two, Amanda Bynes. Amanda, she got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series, All That. Essentially, the Nickelodeon version of late night sketch show Saturday Night Live. It sported a stellar cast, including current SNL cast member Kenan Thompson, Drake Bell, and Lori Beth Denberg. Eventually, the producer decided to offer Amanda her own series. Her success only grew from there. The Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man, Easy A, and Amanda took a hiatus, however, in 2013 following a very public breakdown. In 2018, she told fans exactly what caused this breakdown. Now, according to Amanda, she became addicted to the devil's lettuce at a young age. While it wasn't an addiction at first, more roles came more pressure and a kind of way to cope. And this eventually led her to more drastic substances. She also believed that she wasn't pretty enough anymore to be in films. And she took Adderall as a way to help her stay thin. In 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting almost everyone she could think of. She called the former president Barack Obama ugly, clearly referring a character from the Amanda show, but still. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents. And was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of some interesting herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022 when she stood in front of a judge, healthier and better than ever, ready to move on with her life. The judge then said, okay, Amanda is free to go. Good luck, Amanda, then. Hey, there's a million kids who grew up with you and we've got your back. All right, let's end things off with number one, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a Disney star who actually never really appeared in a sitcom or TV series. She got her start acting at just the age of three, starring in over 60 TV spots and commercials for brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O. She got her big break when Disney cast her to play two roles in the classic Disney family comedy, The Parent Trap. She played twin sisters, Hallie Parker and Annie James, who randomly met at a summer camp and discover their parents split up when they were babies following a divorce. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together and it's delightful, one of my favorites. Her career though only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girls as the main character Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance for which she served 84 minutes in jail. Yep, minutes. Some people spent years in jail. Lindsay, she got a warning there. Until 2022, her career um, kind of came to an abrupt standstill, but she not only seems to be better mentally, um, she's also under contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple years. So maybe her and Adam Sandler will make a Netflix multiverse. Now, I don't know how I'd feel about that, but 
we'll see where it goes. Number 10, Kel Mitchell. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? That sentence always blasts into my skull when I talk about Kel Mitchell, and I really hope it's the same for you. Kel was another young buck to be casted on the hit sketch show All That with Amanda Bynes and future best friend Keenan Thompson. Much like Amanda, Kel was asked to participate in a spin off of All That, only this time he was in a straight up sitcom rather than a sketch show. The show Keenan and Kel, starring Kel and Keenan Thompson, is one of my favorite shows that was ever produced by the Nickelodeon channel. These two had incredible chemistry, so good that Nick backed a movie centered around their Good Burger sketch that has actually aged pretty well. His career never really took off after that, with him only appearing in the sitcom world and in a minimal capacity at that. But his loss of fame was self-inflicted. As his career on the screen slowed down, his family life had been nothing but going up. He decided to stay at home and focus on building a relationship with his wife and rapper, Asia Lee, and they are currently expecting a second child together sometime this year. Here's hoping that when the kids are all a little older that Kel can finally take some time off and make a return to the acting world for good. There was a rumor of a Good Burger 2 being in the works, so I don't know, let's start that now. Everybody, hashtag Good Burger 2, make that trend. Number 9, Miranda Cosgrove. Miranda may have rose to Nickelodeon stardom when she played the titular Carly on the show iCarly, but she got her first big role starring alongside Jack Black in the classic comedy School of Rock. During her time with Nickelodeon, she not only played Carly, but she also played the mischievous little sister Megan in the sitcom Drake and Josh. There's a neat little fan theory about that, but I won't get into it right now. Following the end of iCarly, Miranda seemed to disappear from the world of acting entirely, apart from lending her voice to the character Margot in the Despicable Me franchise. The reason being is she decided to go back to school. She used her iCarly cash to fund a degree at the University of Southern California, where she initially took film studies, but eventually shifted her focus to a major in psychology. She put her talents on pause, but following her graduation and her recent return to sitcom world, iCarly was revived for Paramount Plus last year. She's still not famous per se, but it is cool to see Miranda on screen again after so many years away. Number 8, Drake Bell. Ah, Drake and Josh. A sitcom that gifted us with some incredible one-liners and caused anyone named Megan to have their name screeched in their face in frustration. Megan! Drake Bell and Josh Peck starred as the titular Drake and Josh for four seasons before being cancelled in 2008. Following the cancellation, the three main cast members all went on to have semi-steady work. For a short while at least. Miranda Cosgrove, who we just talked about, played Megan and had some success in voiceovers, but she got her own sitcom and then dropped out of the acting world in 2015. Josh Peck starred in a few movies and TV shows here and there, but he's only recently made a return to the mainstream, appearing in the new Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. Drake has probably had the worst go of the crew. When the show was cancelled, his roles were limited to straight to video flicks and voiceover starring, and voiceover roles, starring as Spider Man in the animated Ultimate Spider Man series. The worst performance of all, though, was when Nickelodeon thought that it would be a great idea to make a live action, fairly odd parents movie starring Drake as. Timmy Turner. Fairies! Needless to say, his status as a celebrity was gone at that point, but the nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed that he had been grooming a young fan for years. So if you see him in an orange jumpsuit on the side of the road or like cleaning graffiti off a wall, now you know why. Number seven, Amanda Bynes. Amanda got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series All That, which was essentially Nickelodeon's version of the late night sketch show Saturday Night Live. It sported a stellar cast, including current SNL cast member Keenan Thompson, Drake Bell, and Lori Beth Denberg. Eventually, the producer decided to offer Amanda her own series. Her success only grew from there. The Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man and Easy A. Amanda took a hiatus, however, in 2013 following a very public mental breakdown. In 2018, she told fans exactly what caused that breakdown. According to Amanda, she became addicted to the devil's lettuce at a very young age, and while it wasn't an addiction at first, with more roles came more pressure and a need to find a new way to cope. This eventually led her to more drastic substances. She also believed that she wasn't pretty enough anymore to be in films, even taking Adderall as a way to help keep her skinny. In 20 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting almost everyone that she could think of. Like she called the former president Barack Obama ugly. Like she's clearly referencing a character from The Amanda Show, but 
Still, she was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents and was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022 when she stood in front of a judge healthier and better than ever and ready to move on with her life. The judge said, okay, and Amanda is now free to live. So good luck, Amanda. There's a million kids who grew up with you, and we've all got your back. Number six, Dan Schneider. Dan was never a star on camera other than a small role in the movie Good Burger, but without this man, we may not have a lot of beloved TV shows. Dan was a producer behind some of the biggest shows Nickelodeon had to offer. Shows like Keenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, iCarly, Zoe 101, all classics that may have never been set to film without Dan at the helm. While Dan was producing well into the late 2010s, his career abruptly ended in 2018 when allegations were brought to light alleging that Dan's behavior over the years was anything but wholesome. According to several set and cast members who've worked with Dan in the past, Dan has a massive temper that would regularly disrupt shoots, he's caused production delays on his own, ballooned the budgets of all of his shows, and there were several complaints about his verbal insults. Reportedly emailing and texting cast and crew to complain about things during off hours. Like hey man, I'm trying to watch Too Hot to Handle, can we just save this till tomorrow? The worst of them all, and what really got him fired was the way that he was towards his younger cast. I won't go too far into detail because I would probably vomit on camera if I did, but let's just say that Dan is creepy creep who likes dem feet. Put it that way. Thankfully, he's been fired and will never make another penny off of that channel ever again. Number five, Devin Werkheiser. You may not know Devin by his name, but his face certainly rings a middle school bell in your skull. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide first premiered in September 2004. For those who missed out on this gem, it followed the titular Ned as he guided us through the daily struggles of attending middle school. It was an instant hit, and I personally watched every episode that they ever made. I basically grew up with this guy. After three seasons of the show, it was cancelled, leaving its cast to fend for themselves and find new work. Most of the younger cast members members on the show decided to step away from the acting world, with Lindsay Shaw, who played Moe's, being the only one with steady work, albeit in like low budget films, but still, it's work. And she's been doing that ever since the show ended. Now, Devin could have had a stellar career, but he said in recent years that following the end of the show, he just had no idea what he was supposed to do next. Devin was 15 when the show finished, and between then and the age of 25, he said he never really found his footing as an actor, always being called back for things, but never actually hired. In his mid-20s, the residual from Ned's finally ran out, forcing him to take his first ever 9 to 5 job. This was the wake up call that he needed though as he was finally motivated to do more. And thanks to many fans who were now adults DMing him and asking him when the next Ned's college or adult guide would be released. Well, Devin has begun doing a series of lectures across the United States in college and university campuses in an attempt to give advice on the wild world of adulthood. He's also begun a podcast with his co-stars Lindsay Shaw and Daniel Curtis Lee who played Moe's and Cookie where the three break down behind the scenes facts about every episode of the show. So if you want a little bit of Ned's declassified nostalgia, then check that out. Number four, Matthew Underwood. Matthew played the rich boy with the puka necklace, Logan on the hit series, Zoe 101. The show followed the titular Zoe as she started her life at a new private boarding school where wild and wacky situations ensue. The show gifted us some highly quotable lines and memorable moments that have surely stuck in your head since the show's cancellation in 2008. Matthew played a mean jock on on the show, but his character had a lovable side that quickly won fans over. When the show ended, his life started going down a dark path. He found himself involved in some legal troubles after being caught in possession of a controlled substance, devil's lettuce, for which he received 12 months probation. He violated that probation when he entered a hookah bar, which he co-owned, in St. Lucille called Cloud Nine. His criminal history was brief, but it was enough to get him blacklisted from the acting world. There is a nice ending to this story, however. After laying low and working on his mental health, Matthew actually ended up rescuing a baby from a crashed car along with both parents who had allegedly over on warm needle juice. This act not only saved the baby, but a judge ruled that the parents were unfit and the child was given to a family member and they're living happily ever after thanks to Logan. Matt is currently working behind the screen as a director on short films and indie projects, so hey, if you see that Zoe 101 reboot in the future, he's ready to go. Number three, Jamie Lynn Spears. Continuing on the Zoe 101 train for a minute, Jamie starred as the titular Zoe in the hit series, Zoe 101, alongside fellow entry on this list, Matthew Underwood. Her 
time on the show was well received and made many fans excited about what she may film next. When the show was eventually cancelled in 2008, Jamie was at the center of a massive media rumor. The theory was that Zoe 101 was abruptly cancelled due to Jamie becoming pregnant with her daughter. The reality was that that never happened. Jamie did get pregnant, but it was like six months after filming had wrapped on the series. The show was cancelled by the executives at Nickelodeon. For some reason, they felt that the show was done and just needed to replace it with something new and more colorful. Jamie actually did have plans to continue her career on the silver screen, but like we said, six months into looking for a new work, a new job opportunity opened up, and it would be the most challenging job of all the role of being a mom. She decided to move back to Mississippi and give up a career in film to raise her kid and be a star to her. It's not all missed opportunities, however, as Jamie is still remembered fondly as a musician, releasing several songs before 2010, and she's recently been popping up at several country and rock festivals to lend her voice to the crowd. Many fans will be happy to know that not only will there be a Zoe 101 flick released on Paramount Plus this fall, but it stars the entire original cast and there's a trailer already out for us to enjoy. Number 2. Josh Peck Josh made up the second half of the series Drake and Josh alongside musician and bad boy Drake Bell. Josh got his start on the Amanda Bynes show alongside Amanda Bynes, participating in several classic sketches before eventually moving into his own sitcom, still considered to be one of the best shows that Nickelodeon ever produced. Josh's time on the show was wonderful. He delivered a zany, big-hearted brother vibe that went really well with Drake's rock and roll, I need love inside attitude. Following the cancellation of the show, Josh went on to star in several silver screen darlings like the underrated comedy Drillbit Taylor alongside Owen Wilson and the reboot of Red Dawn from 2012 alongside Chris Hemsworth. His career dipped in quality following that performance, however. Josh was starting to seem like another one of those Nickelodeon kids who was growing up to be a rambunctious and wild man instead of actually taking his job seriously. He lended his voice to several characters over the years, including various roles in the Ice Age films, but he's mainly stuck to small TV roles or indie flicks. He did maintain a following, however, as a few years ago he started posting TikToks that received millions of views. But recently, Josh has popped up on the cast list for Christopher Nolan's upcoming historical drama Oppenheimer, so perhaps this will mark his return to the acting world, and if it's in a flick like this, well, he might be on the road to Oscar territory. And at number one, Nat Wolf. Nat Wolf and his brother Alex were the stars of the short-lived Nickelodeon series The Naked Brothers Band that premiered in 2007 following the success of the original Nickelodeon movie of the same name. When the show ended, Nat decided to move on from the screen, from the on-screen world and focus on his career in music with his brother Alex. He did, however, make a handful of appearances in romantic dramedies like Paper Towns and Fault in Our Stars. Unfortunately, he took a role that he probably shouldn't have in 2017 when he played the character Light in the Netflix live action adaptation of the anime series Death Note. In case you didn't know, the anime originated in Japan and stars Japanese voice actors. There is not a single actor of Japanese origin in the live action flick, and Nat's performance was seen as nothing more than another example of Hollywood whitewashing for streaming services. He received a large amount of backlash from fans of the show and dropped out of the acting scene overnight. It wasn't until this past year that he reappeared on the small screen. Nat has been cast to play the love interest to Joe Exotic, Trevor, in the Peacock series Joe vs. Carol, a show based on the popular Netflix docuseries Tiger King. While that show hasn't really garnered the popularity that it really should, seeing Nat make a return to the scene is awesome. And as a fan of his show back in the day, I am hoping he collaborates with Alex for a horror film. After seeing Alex star in the 2017 horror pick Hereditary, it's like the only thing I can think about when I see these two. Number 10. Brenda Song London Tipton was the daughter of the man behind the chain of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right as she was about to start college. Little did she know that that character would consume her life for the next six years. She appeared as London on both Zack and Cody and its reboot sequel series Sweet Life on Deck for a total of six seasons. Following the show's cancellation in 2011, Brenda starred in a few smaller roles in films like The Social Network, as well as TV roles in shows like Scandal, New Girl, and Superstore. Brenda is still active in the acting community, just in a smaller capacity, as she's traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star Macaulay Culkin. Dude, Richie Rich and London Tipton have a child together and that's not a TV show? Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream, however, as she's recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. Here's hoping it inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie. And if you don't know Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior, well, that, that's fair. Number 9. Shia LaBeouf. Shia has been a controversial 
controversial celebrity over the years, becoming famous as one of the hardest people to work with in Hollywood history. Like many bad apples in LA, Shia got his start on the Disney Channel. At the turn of the century, Disney released a little show called The Even Stevens. The series followed the titular Stevens family with a focus on the kids, Ren and Lewis, played by Christy Romano and Shia LaBeouf. The show was considered to be one of Disney's best, spanning three seasons and spawning an Even Stevens movie that is one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever released. These days, Shia has adopted a more mountain man look, always sprouting like a big bushy beard when he can, and he's gone from bright and youthful to just tired and annoyed. And we feel that, Shia. We really feel that. Following the show's end, Shia kept his acting career going strong, appearing in the much loved classic Holes as main character Stanley Yelnats, but it wasn't until his casting in the live action Transformers series that he really began to descend into madness. Since 2007, Shia's behavior as both an actor and a person have been getting worse and worse. His fellow actors have reported that Shia takes method acting way too far and just smells terrible on set, not to mention the several public art displays that he gifted the world in the mid 2010s. Oh, and who could forget his passionate motivational video where he just told us that nothing was impossible and just do it. While he may still be working today, his reputation as a celebrity has certainly shifted from a list to the nothing you list. Number eight, Ashley Tisdale. Ashley was making a big name for herself in the Disney world after starring as candy girl Maddie on the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Her character is considered to be one of the main reasons that that show worked in the first place. So it was surprising to see her suddenly vanish from the acting world in the early 2010s, following the end of the High School Musical trilogy as well as her time with the Sweet Life crew. After leaving Disney briefly to film a few raunchy comedies, including the fifth entry in the Scary Movie franchise, she disappeared and fans were confused. Where's Sharpay? Well, it turns out she decided to focus on her personal life and she tied the knot with musician Christopher French in 2014. After building a solid foundation in her relationship, she shifted her focus to a different style of art in the form of cosmetics. Ashley launched the brand Illuminate Cosmetics, as well as a wellness blog called French, which led to her personal care brand called Being French. While she may have lost her name in the Disney sense, she's rebuilt a solid career for herself in other aspects and is actually set to make a small return to the acting world in a new series for CBS called Brutally Honest, loosely based on Ashley's own life. Well, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, I am watching that show for sure. Number seven, Orlando Brown. That's so Raven, another series considered to be a part of the golden years, aka the early 2000s of Disney, starred Raven Simone as the titular character who has the ability to briefly see into the future via unprompted visions. I swear, every time I explain a plot to an old Disney show, I just question like, why did I like this? Who pitched this? The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend Chelsea and Eddie, played by Annalise Vanderpool and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but his dramatic ability as well. After Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being casted as small side characters or secondary characters with minimum screen time in film and TV. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show, opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look. He was drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney as he was arrested for a misdemeanor after an altercation with his brother. Ugh. Number six, Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend Oliver Oaken on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene, being casted to voice Jeremy in Phineas and Ferb, playing one of the titular kings in the show Pair of Kings, and he was in something called Hatching Pete, which I vaguely remember watching, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those movies that I have like a repressed memory for. He seemed to be on the same track as Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney. Uh, people think that about Demi Lovato, right? Unfortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed by police, and the report said that the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of no-no juice just drop kicked them in the nostrils. He blew a BLA of 0.8, which for those of you who don't know, means that he was absolutely hammy, bud. He was arrested, forced to participate in a no-no juice educational program, and charged with driving under the influence. Needless to say, that doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. He was recasted on Pair of Kings, his prank show was cancelled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that just nosedived into a toilet. If you'd like to find Mitchell these days, just download one of his old songs. You'll be the first one to do it in a while, I'm sure he'll find you. Number 5, Jake Paul. The headline here sounds like a Dr. Seuss title. Jake
Jake Paul looted a mall. That's right, the famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short lived sitcom called Bizarre Varks. In 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens, and Jake's reaction? Oh man, we gotta get the cameras, let's go! Video footage was released by Paul himself, showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight. While Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming that he had nothing to do with the riots and they were there exclusively as observers, the video did show Jake interviewing looters in the mall and of course groups were recognizing him almost immediately. Thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas bro. Yeah, how is that English? However, that was just the situation Disney needed to finally fire this guy. According to Disney, Jake's reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time. There had been plans in place to simply address the issue and to learn from it, but following the events in Scottsdale, they had no choice but to just cut ties with the performer immediately. He was charged with criminal trespassing, and while Jake's videos may still rack up millions of views online, he's certainly no celebrity anymore. His defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote, public service. Well, okay, if I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from a Hot Topic, is that also a public service? Number four, Jennifer Stone. Another Wizards of Waverly Place co-star, Jennifer Stone is just another one of those people to lose their fame overnight, but it wasn't due to anything outlandish. Jennifer played the best friend to Selena Gomez's Alex Russo, Harper Finkel, on Wizards of Waverly Place. Harper was a bubbly and eccentric character, usually wearing some kind of elaborate dress made from something that just shouldn't be a dress. She played the role so well that the writers decided to make her and Alex live together in the later seasons to give Stone as much screen time as possible. Following the cancellation of the show, she was swooped up by another channel that I'm apparently not supposed to say the name of, but it rhymes with Clickalodeon, and was casted as the babysitter slash narrator on the show, Dead Time Stories. Good old fashioned horror shows aimed at kids, huh? Yeah. Are, are you afraid of the dark, anybody? Huh? Unfortunately, that show seemed to be her last, as following the final season, she's remained fairly aloof from the public eye, appearing in small budget flicks, but she mostly stays at home and takes care of her mental and physical health. Jennifer was diagnosed with diabetes in 2017 and has been participating in public outreach programs ever since. You go, Finkel! Number three, Ricky Ullman. He was Phil. Phil of the future, keeping it together just as best as we can. Sorry, that show had the catchiest theme song of all time. You may recognize Ricky as the face of the hit show, Phil of the future. Following the titular Phil and his family struggling to adjust to the year 2000 after their time machine breaks down in the wrong destination. That's right, if you thought the DeLorean from Back to the Future was strange, these guys built their time machine into an RV. If you're gonna build a time machine, why not do it in style? The show was loved, but it was cut short after only two seasons on air, meaning that Ricky was just nine when he was suddenly out of steady work. In an interview with Insider Magazine, he said that he regrets the way he handled the situation back then. The reality was Ricky didn't know how to navigate the world of Hollywood as he got the role of Phil because he was pressured into attending an audition. He appeared in a few small projects following the show's cancellation, even making an appearance on the hit comedy series Broad City. But nowadays, Ricky just sits in a chair next to his phone waiting for that call to hopefully come. Reboot time, baby. Number two, Christy Romano. Christy was Disney's go-to girl in the early 2000s. After breaking onto the scene starring as Ren Stevens in the legendary sitcom The Even Stevens. While she may have starred alongside future Transformers star and maniac Shia LaBeouf, it was Christy that stole the show. She played the character effortlessly for three seasons before being tapped to lend her voice to another Disney icon. Christy provided the voice of the animated super spy Kim Possible. Following the cancellation of that series in 2011, Romano actually used her new fortune to attend film school and study what goes on behind the scenes. Romano has remained outside the acting world since that time, apart from a starring role on Broadway as Belle in Beauty and the Beast in 2018. Her most recent venture is that of a YouTube blogger, now chronicling her day to day life as a mom. She may not be famous anymore, but she will certainly go down as one of the Disney Channel's greatest. And at number one, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a Disney star who actually never appeared in a sitcom or a TV series. She got her start acting at just the age of three, starring in over 60 TV spots and commercials from brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O, she got her big break when Disney casted her to play two roles in the classic family comedy Parent Trap. She played twin sisters Hallie Parker and Annie James, who randomly meet at a summer camp and discover their parents split them up when they were babies following a divorce. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together, and it's really just a delightful movie. Her career only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girls as the main character 
daughter, Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance, for which she served only 84 minutes in jail. Yep, minutes. Some people spend years in jail for less, but Lindsay got a warning. Hmm. Until 2022, her career was at an abrupt standstill. But she not only seems to be better mentally speaking, but she's also under a new contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple of years. So maybe her and Adam Sandler will make like a Netflix multiverse. I don't know how I feel about that. Coming at number 10 today, we have the Kardashians. For years, the Kardashian family has often been criticized for being famous for doing nothing. Thanks to Kris Jenner, nobody would probably know their names if she didn't leak a certain tape of her eldest daughter, Kim Kardashian. While her family may now be millionaires and billionaires thanks to their many companies within the clothing and beauty industry, they still try to claim that they work hard to be where they are today. However, if it wasn't for their insane drama and big peaches, we probably wouldn't even know their names, let's face it. Kris Jenner was smart and she used this to her advantage and with her power she was able to make her family the most famous family in Hollywood. Like everyone knows that if you want to go anywhere at this point, you have to get in with the Kardashian family as once you befriend the whole family, a lot of doors open up and it will help you get to where you need to go. Just look at Black China and Tyga. No one really knew who they were and now they're pretty much household names. However, outside all the drama with this family, what are they actually famous for? So Kendall is a model. But what does the rest of the family do other than complain about the reason that people aren't making it into the industry is because they aren't waking up every day to work their hardest. It seems like today they're only in the spotlight for their toxic image that they impose on weight loss and how being skinny is the only thing you can do to be pretty. Number 9. Andrew Tate Andrew Tate is blowing up online due to his controversial opinions on being a man and making money and it's creating headlines across the web. While he's often endorsed a misogynistic culture, he is also admitted to scamming guys on the internet. When he is not creating harmful content on social media, he is frequently seen flaunting his yachts, Bugattis, and wealth. And by now you're probably wishing that this guy never even rose to fame. With Andrew preaching about how women belong to men and men can do anything they want to them shows that Andrew has zero respect for women. And his recent arrest in Romania shows that this guy is garbage. And he's just as garbage as we all believed him to be. Andrew's viewers tend to be misogynistic men like him, as well as naive adolescent boys who just can't get girls to like them. With his content being dangerous to view, these younger individuals have come so heavily influenced by Tate that they have even adopted this misogynistic and racist view that he's expressed on all of his platforms. Examples include how Tate uses racial slurs in his tweets and has degraded women on his podcast for having no innate responsibility or honor. Like, I don't know why the world has a tendency of making such garbage people famous, but out of all the people, why do men love this guy so much? Like there's nothing impressive. Like he's even too scared to get into a ring with Logan Paul because he knows he'll lose. While his presence on social media has started to diminish, to diminish, it's clear people like Tate don't deserve fame or money and they're not worth the spotlight at all. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming at number eight, we have Chris Brown. At one point, Chris Brown represented the future of pop and R&B music. With his Michael Jackson, like dance moves, cute boyish looks, and songs about chasing girls in school, now he's all grown up, tatted, and sings about wetting the bed and making headlines the trending topic on Twitter, and it seems like every week is just a different topic. So why has Chris Brown become a celebrity that everyone loves, but at the same time, loves to hate? Over the years, Chris has had beef with multiple celebrities, and each time there is beef, Chris always seems to be in the wrong as he always takes things way too far. While he was an extremely talented artist, I can only imagine the amount of pressure one must have when living under a microscope everything you do or say judged by millions of people. But even with saying that, even being stressed from your job can't justify your actions. And honestly, it just, baffle, it just baffles me why people even choose to support him after he has a long history of being violent with women. So why are we supporting him? Number seven, James Corden. 
James Corden is only popular for his role as a late night talk show host. But even though everyone knows who he is, he isn't exactly everyone's favorite cup of tea. And a lot of people have actually expressed their dislike towards him. While James has gone on to become one of the most popular talk show hosts in recent years, his popularity hasn't always come with the audience's full approval. While his work in movies such as Into the Woods, Cats and Trolls could easily make him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry, he has been deemed as being annoying and has earned the dislike of the audience over the years over various reasons. While the reason so many people dislike James Corden has been fueled by different events, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, it's clear that he shouldn't be famous and none of us should buy into his nice guy image. And on more than one occasion, he's actually been caught being rude and fake in interviews and in his shows when talking to his guests. James is known to interrupt or talk over people and he has the constant need to sing over his guests in his fan favorite segment, Carpool Karaoke. Also, let's not forget how he's rude to servers at restaurants. To me, it seems like James has never worked a customer service job and that's why he has zero respect for people. Number six, Jake and Logan Paul. It just seems like everything Jake and Logan Paul do lately is highly controversial and it makes you wonder why the brothers even rose to fame in the beginning and how they were even able to stay on top despite all the negative things they seem to do. Sure, both brothers are extremely good looking, but do good looks just give you a free pass in the industry to get away with dumb behavior? Both brothers rose to fame after they started out on Vine by sharing prank videos that amassed millions of views. After the video sharing app shut down in 2016, they would take their talents to YouTube and Instagram and they would continue to gain millions of fans. And since their rise to fame, multiple controversies and legal issues have followed them. Despite their controversial lifestyle, the brothers have somehow managed to grow their fame through acting and boxing, making them more than just internet sensations. The Paul brothers' seemingly endless controversies over the years have been polarizing to watch. With Jake facing multiple lawsuits, essay allegations, and have been accused of terrorizing his neighbors, he even lost his gig on the Disney Channel show, Bizarre Bark. Yet it seems like even with scandals and allegations, the brothers have been able to continue on because their fans still remain unfazed by their actions, which is pretty disturbing. Number five, Addison Rae. So something's really been bothering me since the release of TikToker Addison Rae's He's All That Movie. Like, if entering into 2023, we could just not cast TikTok stars in shows and movies, it would be great because it's clear fame doesn't correlate with talent. It seems like TikTokers who become famous often branch out exploring other talents such as those in the music or movie industry. And every time I have to listen to a song or watch the movie, I have to think. Who thought this was a good idea? Now mind you, some have actually been able to cross the platform and make it into other industries such as Bella Porsche, but it seems like for some, they think they can just hide behind their smiles to distract us away from their poor acting. Cough, cough, Addison, right? Addison's acting, and he's all that was notorious at its best, as the acting was pretty much comparable to the kids on the Disney Channel. If the movie actually starred a trained actress, it probably could have lived up to its hit 1999, Desser, She's All That. Since influencers are already in the position of power and money, opportunities are often just handed to them. And many don't have to work to achieve their goals, which bothers me the most. Those in the acting industry have paid thousands of dollars to attend classes to make names for themselves. That, and that's why influencers on TikTok shouldn't have the ability to become actors instantly without any preparation just because they're famous figures. Number four, Elon Musk. The overwhelming news flow that comes along with Elon Musk and his company just makes all of our heads hurt. And it's actually, to be honest, Pretty weird to watch a bunch of famous people scream at each other over Twitter constantly. While they are always trying to do some righteous combat online, I honestly just wanna take out my phone and look at pictures of my cat while it all unfolds. Now, there are essentially two distinct narratives when it comes to Elon, and they are in their simplest terms. One, Elon is a hero, and two, Elon is a villain. But if I had a third option, 
honestly, it would be who cares and why are we even talking about this guy as he's just a normal guy with an unusual amount of money. To support any of his moves, you practically choose to emphasize certain facts and de-empathize others. And you literally accuse everyone that writes about Musk in a big picture way of cherry picking. While his narrative has definitely been divided between genius and villain, it becomes so large that trying to just get back up to speed on all of his drama just makes me not want to come into work and read about it. Like I get it. The dude is filthy rich and he's highly controversial as he tries to make the world a dangerous place while implementing free speech. But do we have to make all rich people famous? Because Elon is just someone I would like to forget about at this point. Number 3 The Royal Family While the Queen was pretty popular, there have been a series of public relation disasters that have tarnished the rest of the royal family. And while Charles has taken over the throne, it makes us wonder if the UK will soon abolish the monarchy. Now, the institution itself continues to enjoy broad support and with the UK under unprecedented strain from the Scottish separatism proves that it may be hard for any future monarch to be able to provide the same steady influence as Queen Elizabeth did. While many controversies never touch the Queen, it's bound to make things even more difficult for Charles who has been subjected to intense scrutiny. Especially since people still believe that the royal family had something to do with the passing of Princess Diana. The whole family is just a giant symbol of what's wrong with the world and it makes me question why do we even still have a monarchy at this point? Like what are they truly doing that the world leaders aren't currently doing? Like let's be real here, Charles is going to have to find someone to help him fill in Elizabeth's shoes as it's definitely going to take two men to do her job. As we're not just questioning the monarchy at this point, but the country that produced it. Like we're honestly not in the medieval times anymore and we need to step away from the whole one family rules the world type of thing. Number 2 James Charles There's something about James Charles still being famous after trying to talk to younger boys that just doesn't sit right with me. Or can we also bring up the fact that he hangs out with younger kids that became famous on TikTok? Something about that just gives me the ick. At this point, it only seems like he's famous because he's influenced by fame, power, and a fat bank account. But his actions just prove that he's a bad role model and there's something that's just really sus about him. Even while he has become one of the most hated influencers around the controversial situations he's found himself in, it seems like fans still believe he wasn't completely in the wrong for any of them. A majority of people just didn't care to follow the drama surrounding the beauty community because they found it just cringy. Like he's clearly a terrible person, there's no denying that, but at this point, he's just famous for being famous and, it, and it's kind of really hard to see why he's still on the top when he's not even talented nor charismatic. Number 1. Dr. Phil Okay, I honestly hate cancel culture but if there's one person that needs to be cancelled it's Dr. Phil. How this man still has a show is beyond me. Dr. Phil has pretty much become a controversial figure since he became one of the highest paid celebrities in Hollywood. With him having some flamboyant cases of people with problems, he has somehow managed to build an audience who will boo and make fun of his guests rather than call him out on his outrageous behavior. While he claims to give some free treatment, there have been claims of abuse at a ranch type facility treatment that he sends minors to. A young woman claims that she was not even allowed to call home and even bad baby has confirmed that she witnessed some heartbreaking things go down on the ranch and called Dr. Phil out on it. What's even more concerning is that Dr. Phil doesn't even have a license to practice any of this in any state although he does have the proper education, credentials. He has often stated that he doesn't like one on one therapy but He'll do it just to humiliate you in front of an audience? There's something about messing with someone's mental health publicly, let alone behind closed doors that bothers me and it's kind of outrageous that people think it's okay when he does it. 